This week's Apple Podcast review comes from our lovely mod, Matt Turk 76 Top 10 reasons to enjoy the Nerdy Wordy Book Club. Number 10, excellent discussion about a beloved fantasy book series. Number 9, in-depth theorizing that we can neither confirm nor deny. Number 8, related tangents. Number, nine, uh, number 7, unrelated tangents. <laughs> I think those should be flipped personally. 6 is Smut Corner. Five is Clarus's pee breaks. Four is unexpected phone calls. Three is package delivery. Uh, that could mean a few things. Two, locks. And number one, the soothing sounds of extremely aggressive construction work. That is right. Welcome back to the Nerdy, the Wordy, the Book Club. The Book Club Blue. Thank you for coming back to the Nerd Table. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, what's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Claire Ruth. And this is the show where we are currently talking about the entirety of the Wheel of Time as we read it, as first-time readers, mm -hmm. a thing that is becoming more and more difficult for me because I just want to, I just want to like, not stop. Reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to put the book down, which I'm sure uh, some of you guys uh, feel. <laughs> but also, like, we have other things that have to get done, so, like, it's I good know. that we get other things done. I, yeah, 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 yeah. In moderation, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tythonisk says there is an 11th one, an 11th reason to listen to this podcast, and it's to say to Nerdy Knightley how much he is wrong, so. Wow, Okay. Being bullied already. We just got started. Uh, if you would like for your review to be read on the podcast, go over to Apple Podcasts, wherever that that is, uh, and <laughs> give a five star review, or even a four star review, or a three star. I don't really care. If your review's funny enough, it'll get read. That's if it's not funny, it true. will still get read. We will yes. read all of them. Mm -hmm. Although we're starting to get a bunch, so some of them might end up being like TikToks or something. Uh, they might not all get read on the show because uh, y'all are very kind to us, and we very much appreciate it. Helps the podcast. Grow. Yes, thank Be you guys. Before we get into today's uh, reading, mm -hmm. uh, we have to do some housekeeping, like always. Yeah, a uh, little first things first is um, uh, it's very exciting. We have uh, several new subscribers. Yes. Come over here from... Um, several. Yes, probably probably from Sandman. And so... Uh, if uh, so if you're one of the uh, 1,800 people who have subscribed to the channel in the last nine days... Thanks. Um, Hi. Hi. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. Or if you're one of the <laughs> 2,250 people who have subscribed in the last 12 days, uh, welcome in. This is the Nerdy Wordy Book Club. Yes. It's our Wheel of Time show. It is our Wheel of Time show. We are first time readers. So please, no spoilers in the chat. They will get bail fired by the mods. Mm -hmm. And uh, welcome on in if you're um, if you're fr here from Sandman and you're also a Wheel of Time fan. Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, y'all, uh, just a heads up. Mm -hmm. We did say that on uh, September 9th, we were going to be starting the sixth book. I believe mm -hmm. it's Crown of Daggers is next. Um, that may or may not happen. We are... Um, it's Crown of Swords. You mixed Path of Daggers and Crown of Swords. Crown of Swords. Very close. Very uh, close. We, are, we decided uh, to celebrate our anniversary this year. And so we are going to Disney World. Uh, Yay. <laughs> if the internet is good enough at the Disney Resort, we will be streaming that morning. If mm -hmm. not, it will be the next week. Um, but we decided uh, it's Clarice's birthday uh, and then our anniversary the next month. We're going to take some time to have a little bit of a an actual vacation where we yeah. like just go to Disney and chill with some friends. Yeah, not like a work vacation, but like an actual like we're going to um, find some free time vacation. But the one thing I promise you is that if the internet is good enough, we will do book club. We will do book club. Um, we'll probably do like a test stream on like the Tuesday, mm -hmm. most likely. Um, just It'll be see. similar to Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do a random test stream. Mm -hmm. So turn your notifications on because we that will not be um that will not be planned. Um, so we have a couple more members. Um, Orchid Eater, member for eight months. Welcome back to the Nerd Table. That's, Thank you. I think you. eight months is as OG as you can get in the Narks. So I think we turned it on in January, right? I think, yeah. So Orchid Eater, thank you for being an OG Narg. <laughs> uh, and 56, welcome to the Nargs as well. Welcome, welcome to the Nerd Table. We love all our Nargs, whether they be new Nargs or old Nargs. We do, we do. Uh, the <laughs> last bit of housekeeping, uh, and this is the same one every week, uh, is that this audio podcast is sponsored by another audio thing. And that audio thing starts with the same three letters because it's audible. 
Audible is a service that lets you listen to people talk in accents like this one. Forget about it. I'm walking here. I want to find the, the, the audiobook that is in that voice. There's got to be one, guys. Oh, no, no, yeah. It's called The Godfather. <laughs> the Sonny name. Corleone. Absolutely You not. come to me on this, the day of my daughter's gabagool. No, mm -mm. I'm, that's, that's going to be a no for me, dog. Uh, <laughs> I would listen. I would listen if to Randy Jackson. Pride and Prejudice as narrated narrated by Randy Jackson. Oh, me too. That's what I need. I need more. We need I, more Randy Jackson. I don't even know why he was famous. <laughs> He's an incredible music producer. Oh, okay, like legendary music. Producer. I believe you. Yeah. I believe you. I. But we need more Randy Jackson. Mm -hmm. I, they do such a good job of pairing the right author with the right book. Yep. Audible, here's my pitch to you. Start pairing the wrong author with the right book. You know how Gilbert Gottfried's Fifty Shades of Grey is legendary? Uh-huh. I, I, I need more of that action. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. I I need, like, oh, who would be good? I would love, like, a Mitch Hedberg Fifty Shades of Grey. May he rest in peace. One of the funniest comedians of all time. Um... Oh my goodness! Um, but yeah, Audible. I need I need more like really inappropriate authors for like hilarious titles. I need like Kaylee Cuoco's um, Harley Quinn to read like uh, my next whatever like cookbook, like my like Betty Crocker cookbook. Hey, Putin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Put the fucking salt in the fucking dish. <laughs> Uh, Audible, you can have that one for free. But Samuel you know. L. Jackson reads Sense and Sensibility. Ah, oh, incredible. Uh, MJ Daniel <laughs> says, uh, Gilbert Gottfried as the parrot in Aladdin. I hate to break this to you, MJ Daniel, but the parrot in Aladdin is just his voice. <laughs> that is, that just is just Gilbert him. Gottfried. Yes, When I went down to the store for milk, my daddy... Yeah. Um, Christopher Walken reading Ikea instructions. Incredible. That would take so long. Incredible. No, I would rage quit so fast. You know what an Allen oh wrench is. Uh, it's the little uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. L with the Anyways, serrated edges. Get your free Audible credit trial for downloading with our link. <laughs> We've done this for so many weeks and you have no idea what it is. No, you get, you get, if you it's use go to audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly yes. for a free audiobook and a free yes. month of Audible. That's what it is. You get a free book, which is <laughs> yeah, the credit. You need to mention the website they go to. Audible. It's an audio podcast. They know. Audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly. <laughs> uh, we have not watched the Demandred at Shia Ghoul yet, seen yet, we all time, but we are going to do a reaction to the Gilbert Godfrey oh, thing. Oh, no, no. I watched it. You watched it? It was very funny. What? The, like, little clip? We were going to do a reaction. No, no, wait. Gil no, not the Gilbert Gottfried one. There was a there was a link. No, no, who was it? There were these two people who did a... Clarus. What? Jeff Goldblum reading the Book of Mormon. <laughs> I need it. Oh, Jeff Timko, thank you for the super chat, but I need that. That is so funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Josh, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> um, Yives watched our wedding cake video. Loved it. That is right. Uh, oh, that's a throwback. We baked our own wedding cake, and you can watch that video on YouTube. But um, don't do that right now. Let's 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 talk about the real time. Did yes. you actually watch the Gilbert Gottfried Child Ghoul video? No. No, okay. no. It was, a, it, it was a different, like, it was a fan video thing. Okay. What? I don't know if I trust you right now. Uh, chapter 27. I'm hurt. Gifts. We're going to get right into it this week. Gifts. Because I'm, we have to get to the end of this. So is it gifts or is it gifts? What? I thought that was funny. Never mind. Like, it, no one ever pronounced the T's in, in, like, gifts. So it sounds like gifts. Like the... But you just pronounced the T. Yeah. But I thought it was funny. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> 10 out of 10. I'm You're... with Kay, ha Kay nah. Hoff. Was that funny, I... though? <laughs> I thought it was very funny. <laughs> anyway, all right, I'm sorry. Now we're actually getting to the book. Now I'm upset. Uh, <laughs> if Sex Monkey laughed at it, then it's a win. No, so. Sex Monkey laughed at you. That's different. <laughs> I love, I wonder what our audio podcast listeners think about the fact that we say Sex Monkey so much. <laughs> And they're like, why? What, who, like, what the what heck is, is this a sex, sex monkey? monkey? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Shout out to the mods. Shout out to the mods. All right. 
So, Egwene, mm-hmm. we, we catch up with Egwene in the, the fallout of last week's episode where Egwene is uh, like, oh no, I'm in love with Gawain, but also the Aes Sedai are basically looking for my ass. Uh, yes. Yeah. It is not safe. Yeah, it's not safe. <laughs> and so she's like, I got to go tell Rand. And so she goes to tell Rand and he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Get in the corner, girl. And then he puts up an invisible wall in front of Get her. Get in the corner. Um, uh, okay, to be fair, she thinks she's getting there well before the Aes Sedai show up. Um, she and does. You, thank you so much for that super chat. <laughs> Brian Blessed reading anything would be awesome. Agreed. Agreed. Um, <clears throat> she she does get there ahead of the Aes Sedai, but they have a little chat. They have a short little conversation. Which uh, goes nowhere as per usual. Um, <sighs> yeah, because she's wrong. <laughs> yes. Yes. But they both deal with it very poorly, and it just, it, it's... So, my my problem with Elaine here is, uh-huh. or Egwene, Egwene. sorry, uh, is that Egwene doesn't know what's going on because she's not, because she's apprenticing to the wise women. Yes. She's not privy to the information that Rand is privy to. Yes. And so, she just, she is, like, trying to tell Rand what to do from a position of, like, you haven't been in the meetings. Yeah. You don't know what's happening. Yeah. And she's like, I heard this gossip, and now I'm going to tell you how to run shit. And he's like, no, no, it's okay, we've... We have councils of people who have got this under control. Yeah, to be fair. And she's fair, like, he's so, he's so up his own ass. And I'm like, no, you are. To be fair, she is the only one around who has been in the White Tower. And honestly, I think that she should be included in those things. Like, I know mm-hmm. she's an apprentice to the white, to the Wise Ones. But also, she has unique information that I think could be beneficial, right? She's the one who's, she's the only one who's met some of these Aes Sedai. And mm-hmm. the Wise Ones even ask her about it. To be fair to your, to be fair, uh-huh. Ran knows that she's been lying and that she's they're a danger to her. If Ran didn't think that, that the Ice had died about being uh, an Aja, like yeah. Rand knows, right? Yeah. And so Rand is like, "Hey, I have to put you behind an invisible wall because if they see you, you're in trouble." Oh, that meeting. Oh, sorry. I I didn't think that Egwene should be present at Rand's meeting with the with. The, with the Aes Sedai who are coming to meet him. Mm-hmm. I meant Rand's meeting with, like, the wise ones and stuff and, and figuring out, like, um, uh, like a Rand, I, I wish that Rand, when he realized he was going to have to have, like, a meeting with Aes Sedai, he'd mm-hmm. be like, hey, hey, Egwene, what do you know about these people and is there anything nothing. that... She knows nothing. Compared to what Moraine shared with him... I'm I like she she literally she would have she was a novice for like a few months. Yeah, but Moraine was away from the tower for a really long time. Egwene actually probably has maybe a better idea than Moraine had about these people um in in like recent years. I like mean, she's only met one of them. I thought she'd met two of them. Okay, so so she's met two of them, but yeah. like that's that's not helpful information. Like, oh yeah, I saw them in the hall one time is like I, I the, since she left the White Tower, mm-hmm. the monumental shift in that organization, you it would be unrecognizable. Like, Gwen would yeah. go back and be like, "What is this?" Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I I don't disagree with you. I just think that like, if Rand wants to get shit done, the way you do that is you get all information that might possibly be relevant to your situation, and Egwen is included in that, whether or not he likes it, right? I think that he should have at least, like, talked to her for five minutes. Been like, hey, okay, meeting with Aes Sedai, got, what do you got? I have, you know, I have ten minutes, let's talk about it. But they're just, they're so bad at communicating. And I... It, I that, yeah, I just, I don't know what, I, I, I mean, obviously we know Egwene doesn't have any useful information, right? As mm-hmm. the readers, because she shares with the wise one. She doesn't have any useful information. Mm-hmm. But, so maybe Rand should have asked, but, like, ultimately she didn't, she wasn't able to help at all. And, in fact, by being in the meeting, she does end up being a uh, problem, right? Uh, well, yes. Because yes. Rand doesn't think about the fact that his invisibility shield makes her invisible, mm-hmm. but they can, women can still sense each other. They can yeah. still, like, feel, and so they know that there was an ice eye in that corner. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, God, this meeting was cool. It was, actually. This meeting was really cool. And, and I love, I, I, I love how... I love watching, like, Rand um, how, in action. I don't know how else to put it. Because we get it from Egwene's point of view, right? So we see what Egwene is seeing. Mm-hmm. And therefore, we kind of get a better idea of seeing what the Aes Sedai see. And this, like, greed for gold thing is very clearly a front, right? He is trying oh, yeah. to show 
a very like common weakness because the Aes Sedai are looking for absolutely anything that they can use mm-hmm. to get a handle on him. And he's like, well, gold. Gold is an easy one. I'll pretend to be really enthralled by gold. Well, right? and, and I think that the he's finally starting to realize that women in this world have such a low view of men. Yeah. And you can easily take easy advantage to, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he is, yeah. and he's really smart here. I, I think that Rand really shows up to this meeting. Yes. Um, Glenn Peterson, thank <laughs> Glenn, you so much. thank you for that super chat. For that super chat. This goes back to his quote from chapter 18, a cat for a hat or a hat for a cat. I don't get it. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm just picturing Mike Myers in his most horrifying film role. Oh, God. Okay. Have I you know. never seen the Cat in the Hat movie? The live action one? Yes, I have. It's Nightmare Fuel. It's like, it's actually nightmare fuel. I watched that many times when I was younger. And like, when I think back about it, I'm like, why? When you're a kid, it's not as scary. But when yes. you're an adult, it's horrifying. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Yes. Um. So, um. yeah. Egwene, Egwene shows up. Uh, mm-hmm. Egwene is in the corner. The Aes Sedai show up. And the Aes Sedai are holding on to Sidar. Mm-hmm. And Rand is like, yo, put that away. And they're like... Like, what? What What are you talking about? And he's like, no, I'm, I'm serious. Put that away. And they do it. And he's like, that's better. And they're like, wait, can you fucking tell? Well, and then later on, they're like, oh, it must have been a coincidence. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yes. Yes, a coincidence. He knew the moment that you stopped. Like, it was a guessing game. We're going to get into why this is interesting in a bit. Okay. All right. Um, because at the end of these chapters, I I have a I have a bold prediction, and I think I figured something really cool out. So we're gonna get there in chapter twenty seven. But for now, we're in chapter or er, in chapter thirty seven. Sorry. For now, that's a little tea. That's a little tease for the podcast. <laughs> Stick around. It's gonna be two and a half hours long. You know, Claris will go pee at some point. One little super quick kind of tangent going back to book one. Yeah. There are moments when Rand feels like tingling. Yeah, yeah. That I be- I think are because of channeling and that he real like he can feel it without realizing it back then. Well, no, he it specifically one is when um Moraine is uh um giving the horses more energy and his skin oh, prickles. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah yeah yeah. He's like he, he the Aes Sedai have a tail. <laughs> <laughs> that checks out. Actually. That is a joke that will never die in this community. Yeah, truly. Uh, and so they do, and Rand sort of like. Rand kind of takes the bully pulpit here, uh-huh. and he he lays it to those Aes Sedai, and he does not let them get a, a real solid word in. Mm-hmm. They they offer the gold, they offer Alita's wishes, but like he he takes command of this meeting. Yeah, he leads it, and he does not let them get away with shit. And yeah. even before that, he's like, "Oh, Egwene, I'm gonna be humble. Don't you worry, gonna be super humble." And then they walk in the room, and he's like, "I'm the motherfucking dragon reborn. You will pay respect to my name." And there, everyone in the room is like. Good. God damn, this dude's crazy. And he's like, no, I'm playing you, you idiots. Wake up. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he knows how to play the game. And Hell yeah. And Maureen was a good teacher. Um, Hell yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those, like, horribly tragic things where you don't realize... Like, I don't truly think that Rand realized everything that Maureen did for him mm-hmm. until she was gone. Which is why I hope that they, like, get a moment later. Like, I hope, I don't know, I hope she comes back in some, somehow. Mm-hmm. I don't know when that's going to happen, but but it would be cool. Yeah, I also appreciate in this chapter that um, this is one of the first times we see Rand being like, I need Tom Marilyn back. Yeah. Nice. Where's, where's my boy? Tom. Tom knows what's up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Uh, and, uh, yeah, so they, they basically are like, hey, look, we need you to come to the tower. Rand says he will come as soon as he is able. Which um, is going to happen probably this book. Thanks, I'm assuming it. it'll happen this book. Uh, <laughs> I, I think so. I am assuming. I guess. I'm assuming that I, I'm still holding by my prediction that mm-hmm. they're going to kidnap Rand somehow. Yeah. And that they're, we're going to do the 13 Madral because because well, the Forsaken is channeling. there. Yeah. 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 They're, they're they're building a spirit bomb like Goku, uh-huh. and they're going to drop a spirit bomb on Rand. They're going to whisk him away to the tower, and then I think like the next book. Is gonna be like the war for the tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like almost certain. Yeah, that whatever consistent channeling that they're doing is obviously very suspicious, mm-hmm. and the fact that they are gathering more Aes Sedai to the city secretly also very suspicious. And that the the ideal are not catching those secret Aes Sedai is interesting. Like the 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 the, the tower Aes Sedai are actually hiding the fact that they're bringing those people in, which is mm-hmm. impressive. I wonder if um 
They don't have the blues anymore. They don't have the spies. How are they being so spy crafty? You yeah. Know? I wonder if people, if there has been, uh, um, I wonder if some of them know how to hide the their channeling ability. I don't think they do. No? Nah, I really don't. I think that that's like a naive thing and a lame thing that they taught to the little tower, but. Wait, they can do that? Yeah, in the, uh, in the previous section, uh, Mo Gideon taught them how to invert their weaves the so weaves. that you couldn't see them. Yeah, the weaves. Sorry, I mean the like intrinsic ability to touch the source. No, the only person who's able to do that is McGideon. Right. Because otherwise everyone in town would see every time she they use her to channel, right? Yeah. Jonathan R, thank you so much for that super <gasps> thank chat. Thank you so much for that super chat. Uh, Gwen is your favorite character, and the best okay. way to enjoy your story is to take yourself out of Rand's hero's journey. Fair? Alright. I... I like Elaine a lot more now. Or, or Gwen. I, I don't like her. She's very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I just she, like her as a person. She's, she's not the character I thought she was going to be in the beginning. Yeah. You know? Uh, and then, so the, the Aes Sedai leave, and they're like, yo, there, was Moraine in the room with us? And they're like, ah, oh, it was probably Moraine. She's not dead. Yeah, yeah. They think Moraine's still there. <laughs> um, and uh, Nisun writes a paper. She sits down, does her college homework. Uh, and that's the chapter. Uh, yes, that's how it ends. Look at us. Chapter one done 21 minutes into the podcast. Guys. This is a goddamn record. Who okay? are we? It's a goddamn record. <laughs> We're moving so fast. Mostly because I'm going to talk for four hours about Egwene in a minute. Yep. Lord of Chaos chapter 28. Mm-hmm. Letters. In I, don't, I don't have a joke about that one. So. What? 56? <gasps> Been watching since you started and just wanted to share how much I've appreciated reliving these books through perspectives. God damn. 56, thank you for that super duper chat. Well, god damn, Red Gang. That's right. I wish I could, I wish there were like special oh badges god. for that on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube doesn't have like, yeah. Oh my god, thank 56. you so much. Thank you so much, Fashion That's chat. going I really to the that. Disney Fund. 56 went 44 too much. <laughs> Yes, all, <laughs> all super chats will be contributed to us going on our anniversary vacation. Yes, 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 yes. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's so Truly. kind. That's very kind. Um, <laughs> back to it. Uh, Rand is in a foul mood. He's he's upset. He's a sad. He's a sad boy. Blue. <laughs> Oh my god. Perrin who? Where the <laughs> fuck is Perrin? I know, right? Where the, okay. Where the fuck is Perrin, Robert Jordan? Uh, gonna I'm, get John Constantine to come in here, resurrect Robert Jordan so I can ask him where the fuck is Perrin? Guys, we were kidding about a distraction. <laughs> god damn, you guys are crazy. Thank you for that super chat, Blue. Blue, thank you so much. These people's cats got deep pockets. <laughs> You guys know that Nerdy is going to run away from me in Disney and buy a lightsaber, so we need to fund it somewhere. Yes. That, yeah, I because was like... Because <laughs> Jellicles can and Jellicles do. Jellicles can and Jellicles do. Jellicle cats. The dude just got married. Give him a break. I know, I know, but I'm more yeah, so... Yeah, but the like, problem is Fayil is not giving him a break. His dick also, is raw. Also, like, I thought we would find out what happened with Loyal and his mom in this section, and we didn't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's I the real. Know. That's the real tragedy. That is the real Lord of Chaos story. Is and honestly, I just want more mom. Elder Haman. Just yeah. being like, mm, I guess we could do that. Um, fifty six. Uh, Blue, thank you guys so much for those incredible super chats. Thank you. You guys are seriously the best. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. Seriously the best. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Oh my God. <laughs> Tyler, thank you so much. Bethany, did someone say cats? And Zedrog, baby, Cal Kestis is lightsaber. We have to buy it now. No, we don't have we to do. buy it. We do, they funded it. This is our GoFundMe. <laughs> oh my God. What is I, happening? It was a joke. Guys, we've read one chapter. Calm the fuck down. You guys are crazy. <laughs> ben, we are not the Lord of Chaos. Chat is Lord of Chaos. Oh my god. Yeah, Rand ain't got um, nothing on y'all. Is this my Tavirinus? Has my Tavirinus spawned? Oh my god. Look at this bar of red. I mean, <laughs> um, Tylith and Zedorok, thank you guys 
so much. Oh my god. And Methany, hi. Thank you so hi, much Methany. for that super chat No, as well. it's not Methany. Thank you, Sammy. So Sorry. Thanks, Sammy. Yes, thank you. People listening to the podcast are like, what the fuck happened? Like, what is this audio? Um, Guys, thank you so much for those super chats. <laughs> Seriously. I uh, forgot to put on deodorant. <laughs> It's okay. I like the way you smell. Oh, good. Thanks. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Hey, Cross. Thank you. Why, Cross? Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> thank you for that super chat. What What are we doing? Why are we here? What book series did we read? Uh, the Eye of the World. Um, oh, the Eye of the World. Okay, so they go to the Green Man. He's It's so weird. <laughs> He's like 40 feet tall, um, and his dick is like 8 feet tall. <laughs> It's so big. So big. And he okay. has an obsession with peas? It's very strange. Um, uh, we're having a contest now. No, we're not having a contest. <laughs> no, there's no contest. You guys, guys, this is free content. Why, guys, thank you so much for that super chat. Thank you so much. Um, we can afford our anniversary now. <laughs> guys, y'all just bought our Disney tickets. Literally. So thank you. I mean, literally, just bought our Disney tickets. Thank you. Uh, you don't, you don't, you don't know how much this means. Uh, you really don't. Yeah. We, yeah. we like laugh and joke and like I make jokes when I'm uncomfortable, but I, I genuinely, I can't tell you how much it means that. Yeah. You, that was very sweet. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, I feel like we say this every week, but book club is our highlight always and you guys make it amazing and we're just happy to spend our Friday mornings with you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Mike Kioski makes it rain angrily. <laughs> Um, while you're here, hit the like button. Thank you. <laughs> you're gonna shill for likes when we're getting this. I just, someone God, said it in the chat. you're such a shill. You're such a shill. Hoffman's like, well, you guys refuse to run ads, so what else is Oh my God. YouTube literally reminds us every 10 minutes. They're like, that was a good time to run an ad. And we're like, no, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank guys, you. Guys, you don't um, know what a weird week we've had on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah. You don't know what a weird week. Like, the, the the huge boost in subscribers from the Sandman videos has been nuts. The episode 4 Sandman video has brought in 250 subscribers just from that one video. I know. Like, we used to we used to get, like, 800 subs a month. And we've had 2,500 in the last, like, two, 13 days. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you so much. Yo, you are... guys don't know what a week it's been for us. So, yes. truly, truly, truly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> What were we doing? Uh, we were talking about this one. The oh, Rand. Rand. Rand is being a pissy boy. Yes. And everyone is everyone is suffering because of he's, it. He's grumpy this morning. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rand, Rand is like, Rand is losing it a little bit. Oh, uh, yes. no, 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 no. Before he leaves the meeting with Egwene, yes. he's like straight up talking. He's straight up talking to Luce Theron. Yes. And he Luce actually Theron, does that a few times. No, but there, there, well, Luce Theron actually talks back once. Once. He's like, where am I? Where is this? Or something like that. Who are you? Who are you? Yes. That's the first time he actually acknowledges that, like, Rand is there, kind of. Do... Very strange. Are we going to get, like, full-on scenes in the show where the actor who plays Luce Theron is, like, in the corner of the shot with Rand? Well, here's the thing. Uh, they, um... I, I, yeah, I think that he's going to, like, play a bigger part, whether or not it's just his voice. Mm -hmm. Or if he's, like, in the mirror for a moment or whatever. I definitely think they're going to use... Uh, for sure. Rand Lamar, thank you so much for Super Chat. Rand, thank you. Guys, honestly, it all is... Yeah, you guys are all too, 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 too kind. Yeah. Too kind. Thank you. Um, yes, so... I, I think that we're going... I think that Lusteran might end oh. up being, like, a character on the show. I think so, too. Um, this chapter, this chapter is Rand's um, Order of the Phoenix. Yes, yeah, yeah, when, yeah. When Harry's just a, an annoying little shithead. Um, um, this chapter is... <laughs> but I have another question for you. Uh-huh. Okay. The cra listen, this might be insane, uh -huh. but hear me out. <clears throat> Are Luce Theron and Rand different people? Are they different people? Yes. If they can have independent thoughts in Rand's head, are they different people? I think so. Is it possible for Luce Theron to get brought into the real world the way that Brigitte was? I don't think he's in Teleranriad. Does that matter? My question is, is Luce Theron going to be a literal character in this book? Maybe. Not this book, but like okay. down the line. Are they going to split them? Maybe the madness, maybe the, the maybe Rand's madness is cured by him like 
giving Luce Theron a, like, physical body to put his consciousness into. <laughs> is that too? <laughs> no, no, this is, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Can they cure the taint by removing Luce Theron from Rand? Okay, but, okay, no. And then Luce Theron is, like, this crazy person, and then Rand is the sane one, and then they have to, like, work together? I don't know, because he would have to be, like, he would have to be contained at all times. Uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I, as cool of an idea as that is, mm -hmm. I don't think that's possible, right? Because any man who channels goes mad and gets in and, and it's tainted, right? I don't think every person is, like, um, madman reincarnated. No, no, I'm not saying that he is, but I'm saying that they use that they use Luce Theron to funnel the taint off of Rand to keep him sane for the final battle. Oh, I'm saying as like they a use device. him as a vessel. Yes. Oh, interesting. Because Luce Theron's already crazy, and so they like split them. They like use Teleranriot or something to pull Luce Theron into the real world, and then they like divert the taint off of Rand onto Luce Theron because he's already crazy. And then he escapes at some point and becomes like the villain of one of the books. Could you imagine? I, this is Rand wild, wild speculation. Luce Theron? This is. Uh, I do think Rand and Luce Theron will fight until Rand Riot at some point. I don't even know if, if even if they never split like... him out. I think they will. Hmm. I don't, and I think it'll be a projection that Rand makes of Luce Theron. But I feel like there's going to be a point where Rand is there because they're already struggling against each other. I yeah. think they're going to literally fight at some point. That he will be in the. Oh, you know what? It'll probably be. <laughs> Is that Rand is gonna gonna enter Teleron Riot in the flesh, and be, you know how the wise ones say you like lose a bit of yourself when you do that, and that's how Luce Theron gets that... split off of him, and then they pull him out of there, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. Luce Theron and Rand ride into Tarman Gaiden together. Well, because I think that maybe Luce then... Theron takes over for a bit. What? Well, no, but all yeah. Ooh. Right. It, in, ooh. If, if you lose a piece of yourself when you step into Teleron Riot in the flesh. Uh huh. That that could be the Randall Thor Rand side. Rand gets lost in Teleran Riad, and so Luce Theron takes over the body for a while. Yeah. I wouldn't read chat right now. I feel like it's a dangerous place. We're speculating wildly. But what what if? Okay, side thought. Someone has to die at Tarman Gaiden. What if Luce Theron dies again? Yes, to s sacrifices himself so that Rand can have a life, and that the end of this is that Rand does finally get to live because Luce Theron dies for him. I mean, Luce Theron already wants to die permanently, so... That's fair. It wouldn't be that sad a sacrifice, because his whole world is gone, and he's still heartbroken over Ileana, but, like... Yeah. We need to move on. We're just speculating cool, here. Cool, 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 But, cool. like... Um, yeah, anyways. How fun would that be? That would anyway. Be, yeah, 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 I don't know. For some reason, I do... I, him being a separate person and being able to talk back makes me think that we're going to see him split off at some point. Yes. This, yes, this push and pull between them, obviously, is going to, like reach a peak, right? Um, there has to be something. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, okay. That was, okay. Uh, so, uh, Rand is just, like, really just ruining everybody's day. He's walking around, swinging his dick like a club, and uh, nobody's safe. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh... <laughs> God damn it. Uh, he starts to ignore the uh, the sea folk. Don't do that. The Atha on me ear. They, they're they vindictive people. I have a feeling. I have a feeling there's going to be consequences for ignoring them. Oh, I don't think that they're vindictive. I think that they're going to be, like, justly upset. Right? Like... He's busy. He's got a lot going on. <clears throat> look, he can, like, he can summon them to the palace and take an hour out of his day. I, I don't know. I think he's just kind of... He's fighting, like, three wars right now. I feel like, um... Yes, but here's the thing. It is a completely missed opportunity. These people have come to you. They have knowledge that you don't, like, you can't even touch, right? Like, the, it, it is a complete missed opportunity that, um, because cause they could be very useful in helping with, like, dealing with, like, Masima and, like, things that are far out of his reach, right? They have fucking How boats. How could they help with Masima? They have boats. They can travel to places that Rand, like, that... Um, cause you have to be able to travel, you have to know the place you're traveling to, right? You have to have seen it before. Um, you have to like visualize it, right? I don't think so. Yeah. No, cause Rand can just go there and tell Rand Riyadh and then travel there. Mm, no, 
I thought that you had to know the place you were leaving as well as the place you were going to be able to travel. Right, right? so he can just go somewhere and tell Ranriad and then just, like, go there, right? Yeah. My my thing with the sea folk is, like, he's it's been a couple days. Chill out. He's busy. It's been more than a few days. Okay, but it's still, he's busy. Like, like they, they're expecting, here's my thing. Everybody in five countries needs to talk to the Dragon Reborn today. You know what I mean? If you if you can't be patient in that situation, j- just wait. Just wait. He'll get to you. I guess. Okay. Apparently, you need, you need to only know the place that you are. I don't know why I thought. I thought that when Avienda traveled to the Sunshin, that because we know that the female traveling and the male traveling is very very different. So I I just thought that. Yeah, um, but Av- how would Avienda have known where the Sunshin were? That's what I mean. I thought because the female traveling was different, it didn't apply for some oh, reason. Okay, I okay. thought when Ren traveled, he had to know where he was going as well. Um, okay, that that was my bad. Um, I just think that like the 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 Atha and Mir are, are extremely useful. They have these ships. They have these people. Mm-hmm. I guess he doesn't know about the Koromor. Bob C. <gasps> Thank you for that Bossy, super chat. So Y'all super are too chat. kind to us today. Remember what I said <laughs> that we got through chapter one in 22 minutes? Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> you guys are distracted. You're crazy. You're um, crazy. Thank you, guys. All of you. All you you nuts. Um, I hear what you're saying. I, 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 yeah, I just, I, there's a part of me that's like, don't get pissy with the king because he doesn't have time today. Because then he, then when you do yeah. meet him, like, my thing is, is, if you're going to meet the Koromor, right? Yeah. Don't piss him off before you get in the room. I, I guess. I I think that they've been there, like, over a week, though. Okay. All right. I have no patience, so... They're, they're going to meet their prophesied... It's like going to see Jesus and being like, Jesus, we need to talk to you. And he's like, I'm literally fighting five wars. And they're like, no, 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 the, our boat is really important. And okay. he's like, I don't know who you are. Okay. Calm down. But what if the Atha and Mir have really important information that could be incredibly useful and relevant to what's happening right now? <clears throat> then pass it to a messenger. <laughs> yeah, right. You don't trust other people in, in Randland. If the, if the information Absolutely is not. important enough, you get it to them. No. <laughs> no, nobody trusts anybody. Anyway. Uh, so Rand, uh, Rand goes back to his room with some ladies, uh, and he reveals that he doesn't understand, uh, Gia Toe perfectly in front of two other ladies, and so Avienda gets really pissy with him, so she says that he has toe to her, yes. and he's like, okay, cool, what, okay, and she's like, cool, and then she leaves mad, <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck is happening with this woman? Yeah, there's a lot of, like, G- Gia, Gia Toe, it was, is, is still very confusing to me, mm-hmm. however, the section with Egwene later on actually really kind of helped me to understand it, a- at least in part, a, a little bit more. 100%, but I would say that the Aiel, expecting someone who wasn't raised Aiel to understand or participate in Gia Toe, it doesn't really make sense to me. But that's been Avienda's entire, like, goal for however many months that they've been traveling, right? Okay, but if you're... Okay, fair. But if Rand doesn't know better, then he is not... He doesn't have toe to you. You have not taught him well enough. It isn't Rand's job to learn things he doesn't know he doesn't know yet. It is your job as his teacher to teach him. And so if he doesn't know, it is the teacher's fault. Well, it's not Rand's fault. He, he's like, okay, he asks his teacher a question. But yeah, the Avienda is like, you embarrass me. Like, Yeah, and Rand is like, I'm, di- I didn't mean to. <laughs> like. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's a very, like, complicated thing, which is why I was, like, in this section, I'm like, I don't really understand why, but okay. Yeah, like, I feel like Avienda, Avienda, it, it's like, uh, it's like if someone is, like, trying to become a doctor. Right, mm-hmm. and they're in pre-med, and uh-huh. then someone throws them into cardiac surgery, and they're like, "I don't fucking know what to do. I think that's a heart." Well, if you've been running away from your teacher for the last couple weeks, who's been trying to teach you, that is your own fault. Because she spends her nights stripping in front of him to get a reaction. That's not his fault. Avienda is using her titties as a distraction measure. They're a great distraction. Um, they're, I know they're a great distraction, but she wants to succeed. Terrence, thank you for coming back to the nerd table for this absolute madness. Um, Great communication and wheel of time. Absolutely Never. not. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think at the end of the day, what we can say is that this is really all Avienda's titties' fault. Okay, sure. Yeah. It's, it's it's the boobies. Fault. The Gia tit. Blame it on the boobies. All right. I have Gia tit to you, Ren. <laughs> okay, my question is: 
Do you think Aviander's actually being like, <laughs> or do you think that that's how Rand just sees it because he's uncomfortable? Oh, I'm almost sure it's the second one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she thinks nothing of yeah, it. Yeah, she's like, I'm getting ready for bed. Yeah, yeah. What, what the fuck do you want from me? And Rand is like, <laughs> boobies. <laughs> like, <laughs> here's my thing. Look, I love boobs. Guys, I love boobs. I love your boobs. Thank you. But like, once you've seen them a few times, you can kind of be like, those I'm are, all right. Yeah, that's the boobs. <laughs> I'm not going to freak out every time you take your shirt off. I you do. do, though. I don't. Every time I walk down the stairs and I'm, like, naked or topless, you're like, boobies. T to be funny, and because they're great, <laughs> but, like, I'm not distracted. Like, if I'm in a match of Fortnite, I can, like, look at the titties and play the game at the same time. You know what I mean? Happy I don't you. fall apart completely. Guys. I just enjoy them. You heard it here first. My titties are not that distracting. <laughs> Brett. Brett, thank you for Brett the Brett Babineau, chat. why do I feel like Tamal Thor and Abel Coffin get after Two Rivers <laughs> to back a lot and have the best off screen in the book law? Yeah, I would love to see the, the the events of all of this and especially like parent stuff from their perspective. Yeah, yeah. And the Masonic cook-off. I want the Masonic cook-off for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. for um, sure. All right. So, cut them. We're, we're, we were doing so well and then we've we, grinded to a halt because yeah. of the, these five hooligans up here. You, you mad lads. Um, mad lads in the chat today. Uh, um, Rand gets a letter from the Queen of Gildan. Yes. Which is maybe interesting. Maybe not. I don't know what the fuck's going on in Gildan. That place sounds like a nightmare. Oh, well, it is a nightmare. And yeah. that's why she's like, cousin, burn this letter. But yeah. I got you. Oh, like, I, I did like that Rand is... I the, This was a really subtle way <clears throat> to show that Rand really did pick up Maureen's teachings. Uh -huh. By being like, Rand reads the letter. He reads through the lines like a noble, like a Kyrian in wood. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. Like... Moiraine is gone, but Robert Jordan does such a good job of showing her effect on Rand. Yeah. And that he, as much as he was antagonistic towards her at times mm -hmm. in her goals, he really did respect her and he took her lessons to heart. And I think it yeah. made this really beautiful. Yeah, I'm also glad that um, that was explained to me because mm -hmm. I read the letter and I was like, I don't know what the hell any of this means. <laughs> and then Rand told me and I was like, ah, okay, thank you. Uh, Joe, I think about that super chat. <laughs> Please allow me to meet my... T uh, <laughs> to meet my toe. <laughs> my toe. Spank me, daddy. All right. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you, guys. Seriously. Oh, my God. But everyone calm the fuck down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Animals. Just animals today. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just a bunch of monsters in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, this is the queen that um, Nynaeve saw. I think we truly have, like, the the most shadow spawn we've ever had in chat today. <laughs> Just, oh, my God. Yeah. Dark friends, all of you. Dark friends everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is the one who was with um Masima. Yes. Um and who like leaves um Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um so uh the door opens and Rand's like, "Oh, that was weird. The door just opened." And I was like, "Gray man." Yeah, my literal first thought as well. It's like, <laughs> "Oh, crap." I was like, "You guys have enemies that are invisible. <laughs> if a door opens and no one comes through, you should immediately be on edge." Yes. Yes. Uh, but everyone's like super chill. Until um, Rand is like, oh, no, I'm not super chill. That's a gray man. And he suspends it in air. I got, I was, I had to read this a couple times. Oh, really? Because I was really confused what happened. Because I thought Rand suspended and killed him. And oh, then I read like. flies past his shoulder. And mm -hmm. then I read another thing down and Mazram Tame was there. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? Is yeah. Rand fighting Mazram Tame? No, Ma so he suspends the gray man with mm -hmm. the intent of um, interrogating. Which I, do gray men speak? Why wouldn't they? Why would they? Aren't they like soulless? Haven't they been like carved out on the inside? That's why they're, they're invisible. They're soulless, but they can still speak. I'm sure. I, I don't know. They? We haven't we haven't heard one speak. But I was we have just no like, can you interrogate a gray man? Well, you can try. Yeah, uh, and then so Mazram Tame burns a hole through the center of its chest. Yeah. Yeah. I. It's funny. You said I, I also had to reread the section, but for a different reason because I was like. Wait a second. Did Mazram Tame just bail fire this guy? But it was just normal fire. Just just normal. Just fire. normal. Just normal. Fire. Fire. Um, Just a normal hole in the chest. No yeah. time shenanigans here. Yes. But does that make Tame suspicious to you at all that he killed the thing before they could interrogate it? No. Okay. No, I think I think they're I, I think they want you to be suspicious of Mazram Tame. Yeah. But I think they want you to be suspicious of Mazram Tame because, so much. Because Luz Theron is for some weird reason. He's not going to be. Yeah, I think Tame uh, means what he says, mm -hmm. truly. Um, but, um, yeah, they do kind of make him a little bit suspicious, but I like that because Rand, not Rand is suspicious of him, but, like, Luce Theron is, 
right? I, I think the book wants you to think that Mazram Tame is a villain, and I think that Mazram Tame is going to be a hero. Yeah. I don't think he's going to live for very long. Like, I think he'll be dead by the end of this book or the, the end of the next book. Oh, okay. Um, I don't um, think so yet. I think he will die eventually, but not till later. I think uh, I think Tame ultimately gets killed by one of the students at the, his tower or his village or whatever the fuck we're going to call. What if Rand tries to, like, cure the taint and, like, he tries it on Mazrum Tame and he kills him? Oh, that would be interesting. Pater Connell, we literally have a Pater. dark friend in the chat. We have. literally have a dark friend in the chat. Uh, I appreciate my kind being in chat today. God damn it. Cheers. Thank You're you not going to like the next chapter. Thank you for that super chat. <laughs> you, uh, Pater, uh, you might want to plug your ears for a minute. Yeah, spoilers for you. Um, so uh, I, I really like the imagery here of Rand being left alone with the dead body yeah. in his room. I thought that was that, that was like ominous and interesting. Yeah. To just have, like, Rand just sitting there with his dead body and everybody leaves him alone with it. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, this is right. I also love that the Aiel are, like, pissed that uh, that they didn't catch it, obviously. Mm -hmm. And Rand is like, we don't need to tell anybody about what happened here. And they're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That was great. That that was a nice touch. But this is how this is how the, he keeps, he. I don't think he means to, but he keeps twisting that loyalty from the maidens to him. He's he keeps pulling them closer, and the more he pulls them closer, the more of them are going to get hurt for him. You know what I mean? Yep. And so it, it is that weird push-pull of, like, he really doesn't want any of them to get hurt, but he loves them. Mm -hmm. He I, I genuinely think he sees all the maidens as family at this point, and he keeps pulling them closer and closer and, like, acting in ways to benefit them as much as he can. Yeah. And he... He needs them, right? I genuinely think that the, the, the maidens are going to be like the saviors of Rand at some point in this in a big, big, big way. Yeah. But he literally needs them. And in doing so, he's like going against this one principle that he struggles with. Mm -hmm. And it's it's kind of crazy, but yeah. it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So then we cut over to um, Senior Patton Thane. Uh, arguably uh, the most interesting villain to me right now. Yes. Just because I'm like... God damn, Fane! Like, what can't you, you do? What's you doing? Um, and uh, P Pat and Fane is holding his dagger, mm -hmm. uh, which is just—I'm not even so him. happy for him. He's got his dagger back. He's <laughs> pleased as punch, uh, and he's sitting there with a Merdral sulking in the corner. The Merdral won't look at him. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? Uh, if that's not terrifying, I don't know what is. I can't wait for this scene in the show when they take one of those Merdral and make him like weak and like pitiful <laughs> in the corner with his big mouth of shark teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, some dark friends come in, and they, they're like, yo, what's up? <laughs> Someone tried to kill the Dragon Reborn, and Pat and Fane's like, god damn it, I'm gonna kill the Dragon Reborn. Yes. Mah. And then he gets all pissy and kills the woman's son. No. She, he doesn't kill anybody. Yeah? Doesn't he just hurt her? No, no, he's like, once it started, I can't stop it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He dies, and he's like, you know what? I haven't had a woman in a while. And I was like... <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Pain? Bad... Uh, pain, 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 pad and Fane? Bad guy. I think he dies. Yeah, no, it's not fatal. He just, like, horribly disfigures the boy. Well, yeah, both, yeah, yeah, yeah. both are very bad. Yes. All things that happen in this section are very, very bad. Very no good bad. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that's really fucked up. Yeah. And, uh, here's the thing. I say Pat and Fane is my favorite villain. Because he's interesting. Because he's, he's evil. He's, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to be very clear. I don't support any of this. I no. joke about being happy I have his ba dagger back. I, I, I want to be careful. <laughs> I cannot wait to see Pat and Fane lose. Mm -hmm. I'm just excited by good villain writing. And I think that Pat and Fane yeah. is good villain writing. Because yes. I genuinely hate him and I want him to lose. And I think that he's, I think that Robert Jordan did a really great job with him. I'm super mm -hmm. interested. He's terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, No, he's like really well written. It's like Barnaby in mm -hmm. the recent episode of Sandman where I was like, this is a great villain who yeah. I cannot stand and makes my skin crawl, right? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. 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 Chapter 29, Fire and Spirit. Y'all, shit's about to get fucking crazy. Are y'all ready? Buckle up. <laughs> Buckle. So Nynaeve, up. um... Nynaeve's chilling. So Nynaeve grabs Loghain by the head and is like, I'm going to heal you. And then accidentally does. Yes. There's some stuff that happens before that. She like walks around a bit. But like, fuck all that shit. N Nynaeve accidentally cures Loghain. 
Yeah. Oopsie. <laughs> like... <laughs> Literally, she's like, oh, fuck. Oh, god damn. Ah! Yeah, she's ah! like, Elaine, go get, go get Sherry right now. No, right now. You know who's going to kill Majum Tame? Who? Logan. Logan is going to. Those two are going head to head at some point. Battle Royale. <laughs> Number one victory royale. Yeah, yeah, Fortnite is about Mortal to get down. Mortal <laughs> Kombat. <laughs> Um, yeah, she, she, um, for a second I thought Nynaeve was going to kiss him. She's, like, got his head. She's, like, getting real close to him. I was like, what is happening? No. And then she's, like, feeling Those around his hole. Only. But she's feeling around his hole. <laughs> and this was the most, like, erotic imagery. She's like, there's a little nub. Yeah, like, it's just the most, it is the most, like, weirdly erotic thing for her to be holding his head, and, like, it's, like, and I I was just, like, I was putting my tendrils of healing into his hole and feeling around it, and I was, like, I mean, this is porn. Healing, what the fuck? Healing seems like a vague parallel to, like, tentacle porn. <laughs> The yeah. tendrils? Yeah. Especially, I'm like, oh, kinky, okay. Especially when she's going into Loghain's hole. <laughs> Is this is this power pegging? Can we call this one power pegging? <laughs> one power pegging? Yeah. Nynaeve one power pegs Loghain and suddenly he can channel again. <laughs> oh, God. And then she does it with Swan and Leanne, too. So uh, it's a good time for everybody. Sam B, thank you for that super chat. Does Loghain's expanded season one role make a bit more sense now? Oh, a thousand percent. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, as soon as he was back with Swan and everything, yeah. I was like, I did, obviously. And the crown of glory that Mincy is like, yeah. we're, they're, they're, you know, it's like, there got to be something. Uh, Sam B, thank you for the super chat. But yeah, it, it totally makes a lot of sense. And I'm super stoked, honestly. For this actor, he's 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 fantastic. I'm stoked for this moment because that actor is so good. Yeah. The the, the his eyes. The, it's just gonna like, be. I promise you, it's gonna be a close up of his face, mm -hmm. and there there's gonna be zero dialogue, and they're just gonna just let gonna him act eyes. this moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna watch a smile spread across his face, and he's. Gonna, I know he's gonna crush it. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Aside from Daniel Henney, honestly, Logan is my favorite casting from season one. Um, I think that he he doesn't have much to do, but he's just so fucking good yes um but I, I, I there's really no casting in season one i dislike yeah, um, yeah. but this this I'm makes like, me so happy because i so good i kind of love Logain. yeah i think he's fascinating mm -hmm. and master have meeting master tame helps me love Logain because master tame was like how was i supposed to know i wasn't the dragon reborn yeah and I was like, oh yeah of course Logain just Logain didn't do anything wrong really he just channeled he tried yeah Fay Haas, thank you for that Faye, super chat thank you for that uh, super chat this moment will be amazing the tv show given that there she that she was there when he lost access to the power the one oh that is true she was there when he was gentle in the show Oh, yeah. And so she'll be there when he was gentled and there when he's healed. That's cool. Right. I hey, Haas, nice pull. I completely pull. forgot about that. That's very cool. Uh, um, Chas, welcome to the nerd <clears throat> table. Thank you for joining. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all are popping off today. What's up, monsters? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's up, dark friends? Um, that the actor's face game is top tier. Yeah, it's gonna be great. What? Um, so anyway, so uh, Nynaeve is one power pegging Loghain. Yeah. Um, but she's not just using the one power, right? Because usually when you heal, it's air. It's water. It's whatever the other one is. Um, what is it? Uh, air. Spirit. Air, water, and spirit, right? Yeah. And she's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to throw some fire and some earth in there. Why not? Spice things up and a little bit. And here's my thing. Of course you use fire. How, why, why are the healers not using fire? How, how, how dumb? Of course you use fire when you're healing. You got to cauterize. Do you know how much heat we use in modern medicine? Fire is a part of healing. And the fact that these yellows are sitting on their high tower mm -hmm. being like, oh, no, 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 no. You don't use earth. You don't use fire. We are made of the earth. Mm -hmm. We are literally made of the earth. We come from dust to dust, ashes to ashes, all that bullshit. We are made of the earth and fire cauterizes. I'm sorry, yellows, but you done fucked up. This little girl from the two rivers came in here and taught you how to do your fucking jobs. I don't know why I got into this accent. Uh, it, it, this mic doesn't peak. Oh, it's good. really impressive. Oh, good. That's yeah, nice. Yeah. That's why I'm sitting back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I, if you do put your hand over it, they won't hear us. Well, it was it, it it was really cool. Like the the because obviously we know that like women uh, are like weaker in wielding like fire and <laughs> earth powers. Yeah. Um. And so you know the yellows just made do with like what they were like strongest with. But like the the things that you have to achieve aren't about what you're strongest with. And, yeah. And it obviously makes sense 
that the one power, which is the five, like, weaves, would have to be, like, healed with all five of the elements. Like, that just kind of makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, I, <laughs> I don't know why nobody tried that. But also, there, no one has been as powerful as Nynaeve in hundreds, hundreds of years, right? Yeah. So, um, I, this, if anyone this, was gonna. This chapter genuinely, you heard the scream that I made. I think I can recreate it for you, chat. Here, I'm going to push this back a little bit. I was reading in the bedroom, and Clarice was sewing downstairs, and I think that I went, ah! <laughs> yeah, I think that that was about it. And I knew exactly what part he'd gotten to, because I also screamed uh, in this moment. She does it by accident! I know. Like, <laughs> no yeah. wonder people call them the Wonder Girls. Like, she literally accidentally does the impossible. Yeah, pretty much. So, uh... And then she just gets accosted by yellows for the rest of her life. Well, but but then this is, this is, this is why I love this chapter. Uh-huh. I don't love the accidental healing. I wish they had built up to it a little bit better. Um, I felt like it was, like, just very, like... And then it just happened. See, I actually... Okay, mm. counterpoint. I actually loved it because she's trying to... She's doing things, but she's also very distracted. And so mm-hmm. she's kind of doing it by instinct more than anything else. She's not trying to overanalyze things. She's just feeling it while she's distracted by another thing. And mm-hmm. I think that that is what allowed her. It was the the instinctual, like, weaving of it that actually made it happen as opposed to her, like, trying really hard and figuring it out by accident. That's fair. So that that's my counterpoint to that. But I I, I, I get it. I do. Yeah, no, I, I wish that they had played more. I, I think in the right now, I wish she'd played more with, like, even in that moment being like her wielding the three that the yellows use. Mm-hmm. I wish they'd set that up earlier. I think that's what it is. I Trying think I wish the they'd set up that like healing is done with these three arts. I wish that like one of the yellows in a previous chapter had said that like when you're healing, you only use these three things. And that was like kind of taught to Nynaeve. Yeah, or like mostly. And yeah. then she tried that multiple times on Loghain and Swan. And we we'd, like had this narrative of like, she's taught only to use those three powers. And then she tries it, it doesn't work. She tries it, mm-hmm. it doesn't work. And then she's sitting in the room and she was like, you know what? I'm just going to do my own thing. Yeah. And I think that if they had shown how the yellows did it first, instead of revealing it to us kind of afterwards, yeah, it yeah. would have. I think yeah. it would have been more exciting to me because it would have shown Nynaeve's kind of ingenuity more. Yeah, that, that's totally fair. Rather than it being um, 100% accidental. Yeah. Cole, um, thank you so much for that super chat. Liking that you're starting to get better descriptions of how the One Power works? Yes, yes. finally, in book I six. I really, really am, actually. Um, <laughs> I really, really like it. Uh, Fejas, um, uh, that is why Mo Gideon said, I said I practice basic battlefield medicine, so it's so annoying to hear them tell Nynaeve she's doing things wrong. Yeah. True. Yeah, no, True. seriously, it's it's it, it's really it's really interesting, and I think that um, someone um, mentioned above, and sorry I missed the username, um, that it, it just kind of gives... Uh, it's a little bit more of a reason for like Nynaeve to be Taviran. Yeah, yeah. Um, which would have, you know, I, I think I Nynaeve think... being Taviran would have made a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. I, Rather I, than Egwene. Yeah. Although um, no, because then no, it wouldn't have worked. Because then Moiraine would have taken Nynaeve with them, and Nynaeve had to follow them after. I I, I actually do understand guess, why they did it that way. Yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah. I guess. Glenn Peterson, thank you for that Glenn, super chat. Thank you for the super um, chat. It's alluded to, but I speculate that yellow healing is a result of so much battlefield medicine, which grew to become the dominant practice in the current age. Well, it's very That's crude, true, yeah. right? And McGideon like comments on it. Yeah. She's like, it's all so it's crude, and it's it's like nobody knows what they're doing anymore. That so much was lost. Yeah, Nynaeve um, is going to be the leader of the Yellow Aja by like next book. Oh yeah, uh, Turvok. Welcome, welcome to the Narks. To their table. Thank, Thank you so much you. for joining. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, let's 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 move on from the healing to the next sentence, which is that Nynaeve freaks the fuck out and shields Loghain. Yeah, and she's just like holding a shield on him, and he's poking at it. He's like, ooh, and she's like, go get Shariam, Elaine. Elaine, go get Shariam. Shariam Elaine, and nobody else. Yeah. And so she runs. A warder comes in and is like, all good? And she's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Everything's, everything's great. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. Logan's just sitting here staring at me and everything's fine. Uh, I love ah! that. Yeah, yeah. She's like, I don't know what I just did. Uh, and so everyone comes back. Literally all of Saladar <laughs> returns. Yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody walks in. <clears> and they're <throat> like, <laughs> Okay, sure. And they shield him just to be, just to <clears throat> make <clears throat> double sure. Um, mm-hmm. But they take her away and they're like, Nynaeve, we know you haven't made any discoveries lately. <clears throat> That's okay. <throat> it's our fault for telling you you're doing a good job. You don't have to make stuff up. <clears throat> and she's like, you fucking idiot. She's like, all right, fine, let me show you. And she goes over to Swan. She's like, boop, 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 boop. And Swan is like, <laughs> like, 
<laughs> anime like waterfall is coming from her eyes and I was like yeah I, I I appreciated this I thought it was yes. smart for them to be because they can't tell that Logan can channel and so I, I was like not? no they can't they can't feel it right and so because they can't sense the thing in him they might be able to feel it if he was actively channeling but they can't, they can't like sense that he has the ability. Right. Whereas when they bring in Swan and they're like, all right, do it again. And Anive's like, I don't know that I can. I don't know that it will work on a woman. It might be completely different. Yeah. And it is. And we'll talk about that difference. It in is a different, which is very cool. But um, she, she, when she uh, heals Swan stilling, mm -hmm. everyone in the room knows immediately. Yeah. Right? It's not like they have to wait for her to channel or they need to wait for her to embrace Sidar. Yeah. They feel the inherent ability in her right away. And so it makes sense. And then she heals Leanne. And um, I love fucking Leanne, you guys. Leanne being like, you know what? I think I'm going to be a green. I'm going to take like five warders. I know. I was like, you know what, Leanne? Okay. Fuck yes. Fucking get it. Fuck yes, Leanne. Get it. Leanne is my, maybe my favorite Aes Sedai now. Yeah. I just, I, she's, she's so cool. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that she's, like, full on, like, pretending to be, like, the biggest slut and, and pretending to fight with Swan, also that she can manipulate everybody by being sexy, I'm like, man, I you, love it. You do, you do you, girl. You yeah. go be a green Aja. Be very happy. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. How long until Swan bonds Gareth Bryan? Ah, uh, uh, how long? Three chapters? Five chapters? I was going to say start of next book. Ooh. I was going to say start of next book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's, that's what I could see. I can't lines. wait to watch this scene. This is going to be cool. Well, especially the actress who plays Swan is also one of my favorite castings. Um, Like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. my God. I, I Yeah. This moment in the show, this episode is going to be so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Simon says, in the next 500-page prologue. Yes, probably. When we get 26 different perspectives. I absolutely. think, actually, Crown of Swords is just the prologue to Knife of Dragons, or Knife of Daggers, or whatever the fuck the, the books are Knife called. Knife of Daggers? No, no. It's Crown of Swords and then Path of Daggers? Path of Daggers, yeah, yeah, yeah. The all Knife of Daggers. Of, can I be honest? All of the all of the titles for Wheel of Time are mm -hmm. kind of nonsense, yes. except for Eye of the World. Well, I don't the know. The Great Hunt's not bad. Lord of Chaos. Shh. I don't know. Yeah. They're, they're all nonsense. Yeah. They're all just fantasy nonsense. Yeah. Um, we love fantasy nonsense. Night, hashtag Knife of Daggers. Oh, man. This scene was so good. Like, the it fact so that, good. like... It the was fact so good. That they, like, kept Nynaeve angry. Mm -hmm. And that Nynaeve was, like, right... And she, she's just there for it. Like, I don't even... <clears throat> like, she, like, kind of noticed, I think, but she's like, well, it's the only way I can channel, so we're just going to go with it. And, like, Swan, like, and Leanne's reactions to this. Um, People are bringing up that the, so the book beautiful. title Dragon and Reborn, every time, every, okay. <clears throat> if every book in your series is about the Dragon Reborn, it's like naming a book Harry Potter and the Harry Potter of the Potter family. It's like, yeah, we know he's, we know, we know it's about Harry Potter. He's fucking Harry Potter. <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's yeah, it's fine. I don't really give a shit about the titles. Oh no, I don't either. It doesn't. It's, like, they, right. But they don't matter. But like they the fires, something. the fires of heaven being Avienda's pubes is like such a weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't. I I I think Robert Jordan was just trying to be like, guys, <clears throat> I'm super smutty, and you just need to catch on to it. The IEL have threesomes. You know. That's, that was the whole point of that. No, I, I think that it's, I think that it's literally, I think it's, I don't think it has anything to do with Robert Jordan. I think it is publication being like, we need to. Catchy buzzwords. We need, no, we just need fantasy titles. And That's Robert Jordan's like, all right, Crown of Swords. Great. Cool. Path I've, of Daggers. I feel the same about from Game of Thrones. Feast for Crows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot no, of people are going to die. No, 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 the, 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 those make sense. <clears throat> the Game of Thrones ones do make sense. Game of Thrones introduces you to the Game of Thrones. It's what the whole book is about, uh -huh. right? Uh, the 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 Feast for Crows is literally a book about the aftermath of these three big wars. Uh -huh. It's li the, and so it, it is about the fallout of that, right? All right yeah. All right. I don't know. And the fantasy titles are fantasy titles. You got a little bit of your lip on your. There you go. Huh? Thank you. Uh, that's what happens when you apply mid pod, babe. When you well, apply mid pod. It doesn't Guys, last. we still have we we okay. So Swan and Leanne are healed. Yes, <laughs> and then they become besties with Elaine and Nynaeve. 
No. Yes. They become tormentors. No, they become besties. Leanne and Oh, Swan, Swan and Leanne. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, they come in and they're like, <laughs> so... Hey, girl. Friends? 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 Uh, and we, we learn something about the Aes Sedai that makes them seem even more dysfunctional than ever before. The which power structure? Is that they can all inherently sense... So they all basically have the... Um, the scanners from Dragon Ball Z, and they can all sense each other's power levels, which is silly and just dumb. Yeah, I don't love that. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little, it's a little like, wait, what? Do we have numbers? Like, what do you mean you can sense our power? Like, yeah. And if you're like really good at healing and really bad at like Earth or some shit, what, 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 what how do you balance that? I just over 9000. The the problem with it to me is that it is so nebulous. Yeah. It doesn't you're like, mean anything to us. We're like, okay, okay sure. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, if exactly. If you say so, like, all right. You can be a um, dick to people who are less powerful than you because Because they're less powerful than you? Less like, pow- like yeah. Yeah, I yeah. It's just another reason why the Aes Sedai and the White Tower structures uh, it's kind of shitty. Kind of shitty. Yes. Yeah. Um because, like, you know, you have these, like, girls who, like, are accepted for, like, 10 years. Mm-hmm. So they're just trying, they want to be Aes Sedai. And it's like, well, even when you become Aes Sedai, you're still shit because you can't channel that much. So, ha. And I'm like, all right, well. Yeah, it also helps that our girls get to basically lead the Aes Sedai because they're all so powerful. Super duper power- powerful. <laughs> once once Nynaeve loses her block, if she ever does in the series, um, which I hope she does because I'm, I'm kind of done talking about it, to be I, honest. I think the reason <clears> it <throat> keep, keeps coming up in this book is that she will get over it. I know. I really hope that's true because if it's seven more books of, Nynaeve, you've got to work on your block, I'm going to yeah. be like, I don't care anymore. Guys, I posted a funny TikTok over at the Nerdy Wordy Book Club TikTok. Did you? The Nynaeve one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good TikTok. Go watch it. Yeah, I, I didn't love this. I think that, like, I you guys know how I feel about White Tower politics. Mm-hmm. I don't think I need to keep saying it. We all know how nerdy feels about white tower politics. It's not my favorite stuff. But I did love a lot of this. I love that the yellows are like, you have to teach us everything because we need to, We, we this is the biggest leap forward in our technology in years. But they're not even like nice to her about it. No, they're, they need they're to keep the her worst. angry. They need to keep her angry I guess, all day. I, I guess. Oh, could you I imagine? I would be okay. exhausted. Okay, when Nynaeve gets rid of her block, do you think everyone's attitude towards her is going to change completely and they're actually going to be nice to her because she doesn't need to be pissed off to achieve what she needs to do every day? Like, No, once she doesn't need her block anymore, she's I, and honestly soon, they're like, not going to be able to so pull nice. her aside anymore. She's going to be like, no, I'm busy. I'm a nice to die now. You, like, she's nice to die <laughs> now. Yeah. She's not going to put up with it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, Egwene is going to get her out of it eventually. We're gonna get to that, guys. We're gonna get to it. I promise. This might be a four-hour show, honestly. No. Oh, I'm, I have I have things I have to say. It's a four-hour show. I'm gonna have to go pee. Babe, you always have to go pee. Just go when you have to go. Okay. No one's gonna be concerned. Um. So, we get to Sawan and Leanne come in. They're being super nice. Yeah. And uh, and Nynaeve like, is suspicious. What the fuck do you want? Like, and I, Elaine, Swan is like, can you heal us? Better? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you do more? Yes. Yeah, so you, when you healed us, you didn't really do it like good enough. Do you think Swan and Leanne are permanently depowered, or do you think it comes back over time? Yes. No, I think that that, that I think that it's a permanent thing, and I think that they have to um, they have to reassess their their situation, right? You know, mm-hmm. they went from a uh, powerful Aes Sedai, lots and like the you know the um, Amaranth seat and the keeper yeah right like and then to, to nothing um running for their lives and now they're at this weird like middle ground where they at least have that connection mm-hmm. and that will t- and desire to live um and jumping a little bit far ahead the whole thing with Egwene and swan that that seems fantastic yeah. um, very excited for that no i think that this is where they're at mm-hmm. i think that maybe like they, they can learn to get more powerful because like the other girls did, right? Elaine, yeah. or not Elaine, Egwene struggled to like make a little like light at one point, right? But I don't think that they regain all of their old power. I think that they find they find something new. I don't know. Really? I feel like it might be like a muscle. You know what I mean? Like they haven't used it. It atrophied a little bit. And I don't know. But I think can... there's a possibility that... But this is where the sensing doesn't make any sense because can you sense someone's potential power level or can you No, you sense can only sense the, what they can currently hold. What they can currently hold. Okay. Right. So then so, how how does the, Moraine know how powerful a grain is going to be? No, because she can already hold as much. She just doesn't know how, right? 
Like, I don't think Egwene needed to... I, I think Egwene... This is why I hate it. It's nebulous. Right, right, right. right? But I think that, like, they... Because they meet people who are like, oh, she mm. might be able to with teaching, but she's not... Like, they, they meet a random girl. They're like, she might be able to with teaching, but she can't really do anything right now. Makes me think that, like, if that person can grow into the power, then Swan and Leanne might be able to as well. Uh, like I said, I think that they will be able to get a little bit more powerful, but I do not think that they go back to their, like... Potential. Apparently I'm wrong, but also um, Marco uh, brought up that Loghain is at full power. I think that's a difference between the male and the female power. I don't think that's so much a spoiler. And I think that it's a difference in how they're healed, right? We know that they're different things. Well, so they're Lo healed the same way. No, no, no. Even even Nynaeve says that there are differences, right? Well, in, there's diff because there's differences in everybody. But I, I think that like the, the basic of the, the weave that she weaves to heal them is the same. It just affects men and women differently. Do you, oh, wait, 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 wait. Do you think that because Loghain was gentled uh -huh. by Sidar and healed by Sidar, his, his side din isn't changed, but because the women were stilled by other women, that like it is a, that it is able to more directly cut them off from the source. So when they get it back, they get back less. But because his was side din, side dark cannot really cut off side din all the way, and so when he's healed up, he gets to come back to full power because like the female power can't uh, impact the male power as much as it can impact itself. Does that make sense? Yeah, maybe. Right, like if if Rand had gentled Loghain and then he'd been healed, he would have come back weaker because he would have been gentled by another man rather than a, a woman. Yeah, may, may, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, interesting. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe it just has something to do with, like, the certain half of the power that was used. I just figured mm -hmm. that they were, you know, they are slightly different. We know that they work differently. I, I think it, I think it all has something to do with it, you know? We totally jumped over something. We oh. skipped something at the beginning of this chapter. I'm so sorry, all. Tom Marilyn's back. Oh, yes, yeah. He's Tom there Marilyn for, like, returned. half a second. I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he brings rumor that Morghese is alive and inside the Fortress of Light. Yeah. And Elaine's like, no, she's dead. Don't don't give me hope. Yeah. Oops. Uh-huh. Uh, we skipped ahead into chapter 30 a little bit. Uh, cause uh, Swan and Leanne's healing happens in chapter 30. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh one of the one of the things that happens in this chapter after Swan is healed, it broke my heart. Uh literally like destroyed me for a minute. I had to put the book down. I literally just had to stop reading for a second because I was like very emotional in bed. Yeah. Uh and it's that Swan ha gets healed. And then feels this sense like creeping up on her. And uh, it's that she had not been feeling the warder bond. And the grief of her warder dying hits her for the first time. Right. And I, I got really emotional last night um, reading this because uh, my grandfather died when I was in my senior year of college. Mm -hmm. And I got the call. I was in a rehearsal for a show. And I was so busy trying to graduate college, right? Like I had like three weeks left of university. Uh, it, it was just like the worst timing for me to like have another thing, right? And so I, I kind of ended the phone call, walked back into my rehearsal, totally forgot about mm -hmm. it. I put it aside, didn't think about it. Yeah. And my right. dad and I weren't talking at the time. It was just, it was tough. Mm -hmm. And so about six months later, I went to see Big Fish on Broadway, the musical version of the Tim Burton movie. Yeah. And it's this story about this ridiculous man who's this traveling salesman who tells these great, huge, amazing stories that kind of take you off guard because you're like, is that real? And that was my grandfather. Like, that's literally who my grandfather was. Yeah. And I, the show ended and it's about him dying. And, you know, I, I, the show ended and I sat down and I cried and they, I cried until they asked me to leave. And then I walked out into Times Square and I sat on a bench in Times Square and I cried for about 45 straight minutes just yeah. by myself. And that, that moment where grief comes back. Mm -hmm. And it just slaps you in the face because you had to push it aside because there was other things going on. Yeah. And the, the, the moment it returns and then you actually have to experience the feeling that you didn't have time for before, but you have time for now. Yeah. That was the most relatable thing to me. Yeah. And it just, I literally had to put the book down. It, it, it just ruined me when I read this. Yeah. Um, and and it, that, that was one of the most like emotional moments of my entire life. And... It, yeah, it just really got me, and I really appreciated the way Robert Jordan wrote this, and I, I really appreciated how... I really appreciated Swan in this moment, and, and how he really is making her such a real character to me, and Swan is becoming one of my favorite people in these books. I'm so glad the casting for her is so good, 
because that actress is going to crush this role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's like, fantastic. This scene just gutted me, and yeah. I, it, I, I was really taken aback by how emotional I got mm-hmm. reading it. Yeah. Well, and it was, it was, it's kind of just like a quiet, like a side moment. Yeah. You know. Um. And that, and that's what it was, and that's kind of like sometimes just how, how like grief is. Mm-hmm. It's just this like quiet thing. And and you don't you don't always realize it until it's like looming over top of you, and yeah. and, and you know like Swan is gonna have to deal with that. And I'm glad that you know like she has a purpose now and she has things moving forward. And so I you know I'm I'm, I'm hoping that that is going to like help her um, kind of move past that. And obviously like we know she likes Gareth Bryan, even though like she doesn't want to admit it. But like, still allowing her that like moment mm-hmm. um, yeah. to really feel what was go- what had happened was just beautiful. Wow. Um. Uh, I hope it's okay. To read this out loud, Sinat. But um, you wrote it in chat, so I'm assuming I can. Uh, my first wife died on the day before I was deploying to Iraq. I shut the feelings off and never dealt with them properly, so it hits me in the smallest things sometimes. I'm so sorry I went through that. That is. Uh, thank you for your service. Uh, first of all, but um, wow, that is an unbelievable. Um, yeah. That is an unbelievable situation, and I'm so sorry. Yeah. But um. Yeah, I, I feel you, man. Like, grief just, it, it, you, you think that mourning is this, like, period you go through after something happens, you know? Yeah. But that's, that's not really how it works, because sometimes you still have to pay your bills, and you, you still have to show up for your life, right? Yeah. For uh, people with kids, uh-huh. you, you're allowed to grieve, but you've got to show up for your kids, right? Mm-hmm. And so you don't always have time to grieve. You don't always have time to mourn. Yeah. And so... It will happen eventually. Your, your body will not let you get away with it forever. Yeah. And I think that, like, it's it's one of those beautiful things about life that you do get to feel that eventually. But mm-hmm. I also think that, um, God, those moments, are they're so hard when it comes back with a vengeance and it, yeah. it's so unexpected. But. Well, and for a lot of people, uh, do find, like, comfort in little things that remind them that those people were there and what what they meant. You know, mm-hmm. like, some people will, like... See a see a thing that that reminds them of, of like a past loved one, right? And they're like, I, if for some people take that as like they're there watching over me, or they're here, or they're they're in these like little moments, um, that just that that are a part of life that I said again are like just small and like quiet, right? But they're really meaningful and impactful to 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 that person, and that's 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 just what matters, right? <laughs> It, it, this is one of those times where this is an adult fantasy book. Yeah. And it's fantastical and there's monsters and stuff. But I, if I had been 15 when I read this book, this would have meant nothing to me. That moment, yeah. It yeah, would have yeah. meant nothing to me. I'd been like, like oh, yeah, sad. Swan's sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has magic sadness. Now, as a 30-year-old man who's been through some shit and lost some people and, mm-hmm. and you know, had, had a little bit more death than I wish I'd had in my life. Yeah. Um, I, I'm glad I'm reading this now, honestly, because uh, Rob Jordan really does. Rob Jordan gets life in a really cool way, yeah. and even when I like don't like things about the books or e- even the stuff that isn't my favorite about them, I, I really do think that there is stuff in the way that he writes that just hammers at you. Yeah, and it's it's brilliant. And um, this was this was one of those moments for me. This this and it's not even that long. It's just a short moment. It's a small moment between two characters who aren't even the main characters of the book. And they, yeah. they just, it means the world to me that he nailed this bit. Yeah, and yeah. it is, like, loss is a universal experience, right? Yeah, everyone eventually. Has, everyone has their own story and connection to it, and it's yeah. and it all hits us differently. Yeah. Um, there was a super chat, sorry. Um, was there? Yes. Uh, oh, Jonathan Art. Jonathan, thank you so much thank for that Thank you for that super, super chat. chat. Uh, now it's clear that the girls have learned more outside of the tower than they ever could have learned inside. Does RJ's choice of keeping the girls outside the tower still frustrate you? Uh... No, I, I like that they left. It's, yeah. it's some of the, it's the long road back. The going out was great. The doing the thing was great. It was the way they got back to Saladar that I didn't love about Fires of Heaven. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, mm-hmm. But no, I, they obviously could not, could not be the people that the story needs them to and that the pattern needs them to be stuck in the White Tower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought we were going to get one book where they learned a lot in the White Tower and then move on. Yeah. I'm fine with how it's worked out though. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Um, Slick Jack says, given how books uh, made such a big deal out of how youthful Swan and Leon are after stealing, do you think the Wheel of Time show will use different actresses for that part of the story? I hope not. I hope not, too. I know that it's, like, a small detail in the books that's interesting. Those actors are fantastic. I but would also, just they, they've them. never talked about the ageless faces on the show, so I think they're yeah. just going to skip over that detail and not deal with it because it's too expensive. Yes, yes. It, yeah. It's just too much, and... Mm-hmm. and Honestly, as interesting as it is, it's not essential to the core of the story. So I agree with that. Yeah. Um, so we cut over to Elaine, uh, and Elaine is chilling, and Nynaeve bursts in, and um, 
uh, oh no, this is this is the this is the scene where they're where Swan and they come over. Yeah, yeah, where they they become uh, best friends forever. Um, and so uh, Nynaeve is so tired that she falls asleep with a bowl of soup on on a tray on her lap. And Nynaeve pull, puts it under the bed, and then she t- takes her clothes off, and she, like, puts Nynaeve to bed. And I was like, oh, Elaine. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine is being, like, the best little sister ever here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's cute. Uh, and then we go to Delana. Um, oh, yes. This was interesting. So Delana uh, promises uh, Swan to get her one of the rings to let her go to Telranriau to meet the wise ones. Yeah. But then a moment, uh, a, a woman shows up. And uh, her name is Halima. Mm -hmm. And Halima does some weird hip hand shit. She does this. She does this. Um, Like, she got your nose, because the Dark One loves practical jokes. And uh, Halima... (laughs) Guys, this is about to get crazy, okay? Can I reveal my big prediction? Go for it. Halima reveals that she is Arangar. Yes. From the prologue. Yes. But she can't channel. Uh Uh-huh. According to Delana. Yeah. But she can. I think so, too. It's Belthamel or Arangar. You think that... In a yeah. woman's body. Yeah, which yeah. implies that trans people within the Wheel of Time universe would still be connected to their birth sex's um, side of the power, which makes sense. Uh-huh. Right? Because it would be tied to, like, chromosomal something. I don't know. Um, but the reason she can't detect that she's channeling is because she is... the male power. ...a woman's body... But yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But the male half of the one power. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, it's the uh, only thing that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you, they can't sense the men, the power in men, mm-hmm. and 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 the Arangar had that moment where they were like, "What is this? What, yeah, yeah, what yeah. is this?" Right. Um. So yeah, I think that our original idea that it's Belthamel and Arangar. Or, yeah. No, Agonor. Ar- or Agonor. Yeah. <laughs> I, I bet it's Agonor is Ar- Arangar because this just makes it that much more confusing on the mouth. Um. On the mouth. I yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I definitely, I agree. I think that she can channel. I think it is the male half of the source. Yes. Which gets super interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be weird. <laughs> yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. Very into it. Yeah. Um, and so we know that she's a, she's a dark friend. I'm like, I'm, I'm honestly going to say that we're 99% right on this prediction. Mm-hmm. I think I think we've crushed this one. I think yeah. we've I think we cracked Robert Jordan's code here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Halima scares the shit out of me. <laughs> She's very cool. Yep. Yeah. There's an imposter among us. So, do you think that oh, oh, Os or oh, the other one, oh, Osingar? Yeah. Do you think that Osingar is uh, nearby, or do you think that they no. were sent on separate missions? No, I know who Osingar is. Oh, you do. Yes. Who's Osingar? It's Josh or whatever the fuck his name is. The guy that Mazram Tame is like, hey, this kid showed up who's really powerful. Oh. So they they put one they put one of the these new in uh the they put one of them in uh Saladar and they put one in Rand's school. Oh they split up. Interesting. Cause because Rand is like this kid, and then he's like, well, actually, no, he's like probably my age. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. pretty sure that's who Osengar's gonna be. Got it. That's fun. Narishma's new name is Josh. It, cause, yeah, he's... Jahar. It was Jahar. I'm. It's Jahar Narishma. Do you guys see how my dyslexic brain got Josh from that? Do you see it? The S H and the yeah, J, yeah. and then I just made Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you crushed it. I forgot. I was like, I do not remember his name at all. Sometimes I'm like, maybe I'm not dyslexic, and then I see, oh yeah, Jahar Narishma. His name's Josh. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh no, wait, yes, I am. <laughs> Nope, there, there it is. There it is. Um, yep. <laughs> we got there. <laughs> I used to do this all the I When I would write papers in schools, <laughs> in schools, in school, I would get like, I would get questions. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I was the only student that my teachers would come to me and be like, what did you mean by this? Yeah. And I'd be like, well, what do you mean? It says this. And they're like, that's not what this says. You're like, oh. I was like, oh. And then it would like fix in my brain and I would see that I wrote it wrong. But I would literally like write gibberish, and then uh, yeah. Like, how did you get to the, what? It doesn't happen when I type as much. It, yeah. do, it does a little bit, but I see it faster when I type. Mm-hmm. But when I'm when I'm handwriting, I, I and it's why I ended up right. I, I used to type everything. I don't yeah. tell my teachers day one. Like yeah. I, I I brought like a computer to class. I was like, look, I can't. 
if I if I handwrite things, you won't be able to understand what I'm, you know, it my, makes no sense. My school had laptops available for anyone because yeah, yeah. it was a school for people with learning disabilities. Yeah. So a lot of people were dyslexic and it, and it helped them a lot yeah. to be able to like type out their assignments for sure. Yeah, computers, yeah. computer, like computer writing is, it, it, yeah, changed, it changed everything for me. Yeah. Because I really struggle with free handwriting. Like yeah. it, it is almost impossible for me to, for anyone else to read it. I understand it. It yeah, totally yeah, yeah. makes sense. It's nonsense, <laughs> but it totally makes sense to me. But, yeah. Um, oh God. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. I did not suspect Josh. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now he's very suspicious. I, I suspect Josh so much. Uh, um, I wonder who's going to play Josh on the show. <gasps> no, wait, wait, how do they do this on the show? What? Aaron Carr and Belthamel don't exist. Yeah, it's just gonna be other dark friends. Like they're 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 not gonna have the same backstory. Like, but if they have to channel, they have to be forsaken. I don't know. That might maybe it isn't Agnor and Belthamel, actually, because they wouldn't have cut them if it was, right? How will they get around this? Um, Unless Rand like kills them in season two or something. I don't know. I don't know. Oh I, my god, wait. I maybe have... this has to be cut from the show. They can't keep everything in. Oh, maybe they just cut Agonar and Orsengar. Yeah, they might okay. they just might have to. Um Okay. Yeah. There's only so much that they can do, right? They they can't yeah. fit everything. Um, so I think it's just gonna be That's a shame. I this scene, honestly, Halima, this scene with Halima was immediately so fucking cool to me. Yeah. And I loved it. So I I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they might be brought in later. They might be brought in later. I don't know. We'll figure yeah. out. We'll see what they do. Um, so we cut to Eamon Valda, who returns to the Fortress of Light. He's in a bad mood because he wanted to attack Tarvalon. Um, yeah, he wanted to attack Tarvalon, so instead <clears throat> he slaughtered every person on the way. Yeah. Yeah, he's a bad guy. Yeah, he's like, I don't have time to figure out which ones are dark friends, so just kill them all. Yeah, this is one of those times where I'm like, hey, the White Cloaks are bad. Yeah. The White Cloaks are bad White people. Cloaks, they, they suck. Yeah. Because not only did he order it, but everyone in his battalion carried it out. So... Do you remember in episode one of this, or maybe it was episode two of this podcast, when I was like, the White Cloaks are like basically Nazis. And the guy, there was that person in chat who was like, are you saying all Nazis were bad? And I was like, yes. Yes, yes I am saying all yes. Nazis were bad. Yes. All of them. Yeah, it was like, my grandfather was a Nazi tank mechanic, and I was like, don't, don't admit, admit that in public. Don't admit that, please. That's not good. Bad. Bad. Guys, you heard it here first. No one's ever seen it before. Nazis. Bad. Uh, I think just about, in case we weren't clear. I think about that, like, once a week. I know, yeah. Literally, like, once a week. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was fucked up. Valdo's like, yeah, couldn't figure out which one, so just kill them all. Just to be safe. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Great. Love that. Uh, <laughs> do you remember the name Pater? Oh, I do. Oh, we do. We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, yeah. So, we... Um, so, uh, Eamon Valda basically is, like, pissed that Morgase is in Andor because Morgase went to the tower, and so she's clearly a witch. Yeah. And here's the thing. Valda doesn't give a fuck. Valda does not give a fuck. He's, just, he's gonna kill anyone. It does not matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, we get to meet... Well, we, he kind of, like... Someone in the street gives him, like, a little, like, tidbit of, like, you should uh, go to this place. It's, it's cool, I guess. And he's like, yeah. why would this person be speaking to me like that? Oh, it's a... Oh, oh, and so he goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That was such a, like, funny moment. Yeah. I was like, mm, okay. Um, and so uh, we get this beautiful description. Wait, of... Morgase can channel? I thought she wasn't powerful enough to channel. I thought she, like, went and learned but then left. No, she can channel, but she, like, not very much at all, which is why she didn't become an Aes Sedai. She didn't have oh, enough she can't of channel. the power. I didn't know that. I thought she like couldn't even channel. I thought she just like went there and trained for a bit because it was like tradition, but then didn't wasn't able to channel. I didn't realize that she could channel at all. Yeah, it's like very, hmm. very minimal. Um, 
so uh, and Valda, all he sees is that she went to the White Tower and can, and spent time there. So that's that automatically is a no no in his books, right? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah, she wasn't powerful enough to become a Felicity, so she just came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he he goes to the Dome of Truth, which uh, is what I call my penis, and he the runs dome. Well, yeah, it's got like a domed head. No. Mm-mm. It was just a joke. No. You know I don't call my penis the dumb of truth. <laughs> Thank God. I call it the White Tower. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well done. That was good. Um, anyways, it's uh, beautiful in there. And... Um, <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, and we meet, uh, <laughs> we... <laughs> That's the worst image you've ever given me. We meet a new character. Uh, we, um... Uh, we, an Inquisitor. The, he- the head Inquisitor. Yes. Mm-hmm. Scary dude. Don't like him. Yeah, do you think he looks like, um, the, the head Inquisitor from, uh, Obi-Wan? No. Well, they say that they're the Inquisitors, and I was like, oh my god, wait, is it the second so sister? your brain goes to Star Wars. Have you met me? I'm pretty I'm sure... I'm sorry, do you not, do you not see the, the Star Wars bookshelf to your left? Pretty sure the Wheel of... This or existed the before the Inquisitors existed. the two-foot Grogu? The two, I'm sorry, the two-foot Grogu right there? It's like two and a half feet. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, this this does predate Star Wars. Yes, it does. Uh, Star Wars Inquisitors, not Star Inquisitors, Wars. Inquisitors, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. The Inquisitors were invented, or were created in 2000 and... Uh, yeah. 14? I was going to say, definitely much, um, well after this. But yeah, we meet As- Asun- Asun- Asuna, whoa. Hassan Wan 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 Wan? Um, yes. I have his name here somewhere. Him. He's- Radam Asunawa. Yeah, Asuno Asunawa. Yeah. Uh, not a good person. <laughs> definitely thinks that Nile is soft, which is hilarious because we know Nile and definitely not soft. Well, and they meet um, under a painting of the hanging of the Amarlin seat. But he's like, she was dead first. It's really hard to hang a witch while she's alive. And I was like, it's a very weird. So you just hung. You hung a dead the body? body. Okay. All right. I guess. So that's a weird thing to do. I would. Uh, I would maybe. Um, yeah. All right. Strong that's, that's, choice. That's 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 too braggy to me. You know what we I mean? We hung her. She's already dead. But like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. No. No. But we. But we wanted. We just. We wanted to show how big and powerful we were. Yeah. mm Hmm. I hate the white cloaks. Um, I like Pedro Nile, though. He's an interesting character. Uh, so we cut over to Pedro Nile, speaking of, and he sees Valda uh, ride in. So, we, you know, it's this. It's where Valda was at the beginning of the chapter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's received another message from Tanchico. And this one is the same nonsense. It makes no sense about Aes Sedai on leashes and monsters. Yeah. Obviously. And he's I'm, like, oh, this is garbage. The Sanchen have taken over Tanchico and nobody knows. How does nobody know? Except for Pedro Nile, the worst person to know. Well, I'm sure that the Sanchen, the first thing that they wanted to do was control the anything, um, was to control any, like, communications going out mm-hmm. because it just gives them, like, a, it, it gives them the power there to, to get a hold and have, like, a base of operations, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and so the... Uh, so Niles like send more spies. I go send people on horse. Go figure it out because this is this is weird. Uh, and he's also pissed that his like fake spy master is being a bad fake spy master. Uh, even though I think his bad fake spy master is actually giving him good information. Yeah. He just can't. It, 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 the good information that his bad sp- fake spy master is giving him is so insane that he doesn't believe it. Yeah. But it's all true. Yep. Yep. Uh. And fake spy master is definitely going to die. Or he's going to get raised. Or Pedro Nile's going to be like, oh, you were right the whole time. And he's going to get like a fucking award. No, he he believes everything too easily. I don't know. I think that Pedro Nile's going to get smacked in the mouth with the truth soon. And he's going to be like, oh, fuck. And then he's, there, we're going to get a scene where he's like try, going through old papers to see what else he was wrong about. Mm-hmm. Um, so he cut over to Morghese. Morghese has escape plans. She's like, we're getting out. Pater and his uncle, who are definitely good Andorans, they're coming to get us. Yeah. Uh, and so they have a plan where uh, Morghese is going to hide in the laundry. Um, and uh, nope, no, they don't because the no, Inquisitor. No, they don't. Just kidding. 
They're all dead. They get hanged. Yeah, the Inquisitor's like, come with me. And he takes her through a f- to, to see Pedro Nile. Yeah. And he takes her through and she sees Pater and his uncle hung. Uh, and she's like, well, fuck. So she goes and she signs a treaty with uh, Pedro Nile. But I love that she like doesn't like, wow, she's like, wow, so many at the same time. Damn. That's yeah. cool. I'm like, more gays. Yeah, she's cold. No, on she's, the outside. She's such a, she's so good at like, acting it's like like as the character right Mm -hmm. she's she's queenly she's obviously she she knows what to give away and what to keep close um Mm -hmm. it's very smart but then she goes and she's like well god damn i gotta sign this thing do you think she dodged a bullet because i was like oh shit more gays about to be captured by dark friends this is a terrible Mm -hmm. idea what do you think it was the better or worse of two evils I don't know. Me neither. Because I don't know what that the those plans would have been, right? I don't... Like, the Dark Friends might have treated her real well for a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. Glenn! Thank you for that super chat. Glenn, thank you for the super chat. The Hanging of the Amulet is a reference to the real world Cadavor Synod, the trial of the dead Pope Formosus. I don't know any of that. You just used a bunch of fantasy words. That was <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is a that is something that I have never heard of. So I'm yeah. gonna have to go. Do I some feel research, like I, I probably learned about that in Catholic school and did not pay attention. Yeah, uh, probably. Interesting. That's really cool, Glenn. Thanks for the information. Yeah. Pope Formosus. Um, Formosus. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know any of those. Those. I mean, I don't. Oh, ca- cadaver. What? I said cadaver. Uh-huh. I, because I was reading it like it was it's a wheel capitalized. of time, like it was a, a wheel of time word. Yeah. Cadaver synod, but it's it's a, he, the real world cadaver, because he's a dead body. <laughs> I thought it was a name, but he just he just wrote cadaver. It's a re- that is a word I do know, and I I read it like it was fictional. Well, you capitalized it, so I got confused. Because I think it, I think it is a capitalized. Like thing, like the ca- cadaver s- synod, 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 the ca- cadaver synod. But I read it as cadaver. Ah, yes, good old cadaver synod. Oh my god, <laughs> got him! Um, Now's a good time to mention that this podcast is brought to you by Audible. If you're dyslexic like me and reading apparently is really hard, mm-hmm. go to audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly mm-hmm. and someone else will read to you uh, because you're a big dumb dumb boy who uh, can't read the word cadaver uh, without being a big dumb dumb boy. You're so, very smart. Audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly. It is the best place to listen to audiobooks. Uh, uh, Audible, if, you know, you can't uh, look at the words too well because you have superpowers that get in the way of it, um, Audible is going to help you out with that. Did you look at Jahar Narishma and see Josh? <laughs> AudibleTrial.com slash Nerdy Nightly is just the website for you. <laughs> <laughs> but we see how you got there, you know? <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're great, babe. We love you. We have a book club. Uh huh. We have a gu- people watch us talk about books, and I can't read. You read real good. <laughs> you read real good. Oh uh, <laughs> God! Wow, I didn't think it was that funny, but uh, <laughs> nerd equals nerd equals oh. smart. I am about as smart as a trollic. That is fair. I'm I'm equivalent in uh, intelligence to narg. Narg is smart, though. Oh, my God. Obviously. Nerdy the Little Tower Knight. <laughs> hey, I'm 6'4". I'm a big boy. Uh, we know. Oh we know God. you're a big boy. That's oh why we God. don't stand while we do the podcast. Yeah, because we couldn't be, we uh, we both be in frame. We both be in frame at the oh. same time. It's a problem. Uh, oh, my God. That is so funny. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> here we go. Uh, Summer Gay signs the, the treaty. It's bad. Uh, and then they play stones together. Yeah, she's like, oh, I hate losing, oh. but I'm going to have to lose to make him think that he's smarter than nope, I am. No, but Pedro Nile is like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we'll go fight for Andor, and she signs a treaty, and he's like, yeah, but not today. Not yet. We, guys, some things came up, my schedule, fucking Pedro super Nile. busy. I was like, you mother... Nar- yeah, fucking Pedro Nile. Uh, so we cut over to Radam Asinua, uh-huh. um, and then uh, he's like, don't worry, she's going to keep resisting Pedro Nile. We're good. He's a fucking idiot. 
Oopsie. We've only the only thing we know about Radom, because we've only met him this one time, is that he's he's wrong immediately. <laughs> he's we've never seen him be right. He's only wrong. True. Oh my god. Okay. Um Summoned in Haste. Chapter 32. Oh my god, we have a lot of chapters left. Mm-hmm. Um and we I don't have time to yell about Egwene as much as I want to. Um Oh, we will make time. So Egwene and the Aes Sedai meet up in Teleran Riyadh, mm -hmm. and you think it's going to be this big thing. You think they're going to be like, all right, cool. Um, it's good to see you. And they're like, Egwene, Alvir, you have been summoned before the council. If you do not come, we will spank you. You must come or else there will be punishments. And then they just leave. And you're like, wait, what the fuck? Just did they tell the Aeol this was going to happen? She's no? like, oh, God, they hate me. And um, the Aeol are like... What the like, fuck is what wrong is with the Aes Sedai? right now? Oh, my God. Because they literally just leave. They're, like, in their, like, formal wear, and then they just are, like, poof, gone. And I was, like, what just happened? I was, like, this is the moment I knew mm -hmm. that, that that she was going to be the Emerald Seed. Like, oh, yeah, 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 And, like, yeah, yeah. we knew. But yeah. she's, like, oh, God, they know. They found out my secret. Well, oopsie, gotta go. It was too formal. Yeah. And, they, like... It, it, it would have been weird if it was for a punishment to be like, no, you must break the laws of physics to travel across the yes. world to us. We've heard for a punishment you would can be weird. Go in the flesh into the dream yeah. realm, and the and wise ones are like, nope. Yeah. And uh, Gwen's like, okay, I'll try. Yeah, and then we get this really interesting reaction with the uh, with the wise ones where they're like upset about it. I really want to talk about this. I have to be so bad. I'm so sorry. Ah. This is a good part, and I, I, I need to forget. Hi, welcome to Nerdy's by himself. What's up, chat? How you doing? N Nerdy must now summarize each chapter in song. So Egwene goes into Teleran Riyadh, and the wee Aes Sedai are there. They tell her that they need her to come to Saladar. But Saladar is far away, and she's got to use the dreams. The wise ones aren't happy about it, but they are on her team. It's chapter 32, summoned in haste. It's chapter 32, oh, she's summoned in haste. It's chapter 32, and she's summoned in haste. Egwene's gotta go to Saladar, but first she's gonna get spanked. There you go. That is that is uh, that is chapter thirty-two. Summon in haste, as summarized by my song. And there you go. I hope that you enjoyed that. Oh, Deadsy haste rhymes with waste. That would have been good. I, I wish I'd pulled waste out of my back pocket. That would have been uh, that would have been a good one. I don't know, but first he's got to get spanked. I'm, I'm glad we ended with that. That that was um, that was very Robert Jordan to end with a spanking. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can I do it again? Cyanat, I don't remember a fucking word I just said. <laughs> I, I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> I will watch that back and be like, what? What? Where did that come from? Nerdy auditioning for the Wheel of Time musical episode, please. I let let me be um what the fuck was the circus guy's name? Space Sue! Valen Luca. Space Sue, thank you for that. Even though your wife ripped me off, you deserve five for the song? My wife ripped you off? I don't know what that means. What, what did I'm you do? I'm sorry, I stole five minutes from the show. I had to pee very bad. Alright, Valen Luca. I should be Valen Luca, guys. Let's be honest. I'm basically a young. Go. I'm basically a young Hugh Jackman, except without the talent or the looks or the oh please Australian hotness and the abs and the yeah. All right, nerdy little tower nightly, sad violin over they here. They can call me little tower, but you've seen my tower. You know it's not little. That's mean. <laughs> sorry, my bad. Sorry, sorry. You're right. You're right. Um. Okay, Egwene gets spanked. I'm back. What? All right. So. Um, also, your calves, or your, I sorry, I read calves. Your song was great. You okay? Yeah. Did you put on deodorant? Yes. <laughs> I told you, I forgot deodorant. It's getting hot I know, in here. but I was like, I, I was like, you smell so different. 
I was like, did her pee? No, that's not pee smell. No, it's deodorant smell. <laughs> okay, so Egwene uh, agrees, and the I said uh, the uh, the wise ones are like, all right, mm-hmm. so um, here's the thing: we're going to we we support you. You you got to do what you got to do. That's how Giato works. And Egwene is like, oh my god, they're being so nice. I'm gonna be honest. And this is, I'm, I hate this because like last book I really didn't like Egwene, but this moment was really fucking cool. Yeah, I know. And it makes me kind of like Egwene now. I know, I know. I have. Like, yeah. I'm still mad about what she didn't tell her in Riyadh, but I was like, yeah, yeah. Egwene, like this was a really, this was the, this was the right move, mm-hmm. and that was kind of awesome. Yeah, yeah. She's like, uh, uh, like, you, uh, the, the, and this is where the Giato made more sense to me, right? You do what you have to do. Mm-hmm. You do what you believe that you have to do, but then you pay for it afterwards. Yeah. And I think that that is such an interesting concept, right? Because if you lie willy nilly and there's no consequences, you'll just you'll lie because there's no consequences. But if you're like, I yeah. need to lie for this reason, and it is worth the consequence at yeah. the end, it it it's uh, it is worth it to me, and mm-hmm. I believe that other people will see it as worth it as well because I'm like, I, if I do something. And I lie about it. I have to pay the toll. Or I, I have toll towards these people, right? Um, and I think that that was, it just made me actually kind of understand it a little bit better. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Uh, um, Ilana Palazzola, uh, thank you for that super chat. Hey, I'm a little behind on the live. Just wanted to clarify, it's the opposite with trans folk in the Wheel of Time. Arangar is a man trapped in a woman's body, therefore uses the male source. Fair, yeah, yeah, they're not trans. That is fair, actually. I probably misspoke earlier, and I hope... Oh, I yeah, thought, yeah. okay, I saw, I was like, I, you know, the I would, source, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I would not take my, me as the authority on that. Um, <laughs> fair enough. So, yeah, you're probably right. That, yeah, no, that's fair. But yeah, yeah, them, like, using, like, the male source would be, like... It does raise up, like, the really weird question, though, of, like, do intersex people, are they not able to channel... <laughs> Which like gets into a whole like genetic well, conversation that I, I which don't I think, don't think Robert Jordan one was and even. wasn't much of a conversation in the nineties yeah, right exactly. like I think that you get it's kind of a weird yeah. yeah it was not it like we were not as aware of it back then for sure yeah mm-hmm. um um but uh, I loved uh, but no thank you for that super chat and thank you for that um yeah, point of view thank you for I appreciate super it. Chat. Uh, I loved Sorelia in this chapter. Yeah. Well, Sorelia. And I Sorelia. I was really worried that Egwene and the uh, Aiel, like, I love their relationship. Uh-huh. And I was really worried that she was going to leave in disgrace. And the fact that they managed to, like, turn that around and have Egwene leave with dignity. They love dignity. her so much. Yeah. And yeah. The, the, also the, the comment, it's kind of like an offhand comment, but that she has three teachers mm-hmm. when any of the other, uh, other apprentices only have, like, one, um, it's very interesting. Obviously, uh, Soralia just uh, adores Egwene, and we really see that in this moment. And so do like Amis and Bar- like they they all like um, they're all they all have this sense of like connection to her and like belief in her mm-hmm. that um, we get to see, which is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was great. Yeah. Oh, honestly, I love the scene, and I love I I, I really appreciated the point of. Egwene, like, she's getting spanked to shit, right? Like, her her ass is, she's, like, <laughs> ass out in front of all these women who are all just sitting around with wine watching, which I yeah. think is just very weird. And, like, something that happens at Oasis Aqua Lounge. Um, that's a sex club in Toronto, if you're not aware. Um, and uh, not a sponsor of the podcast. Uh, but, like, if you want to, we <laughs> take your money. We are shameless. Um, we have a Disney trip we have to pay for. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... She she takes it and takes it and takes it. And she's upset that she doesn't take it. She's crying. She's, like, upset that she's not as stoic as Anayil. Mm-hmm. And then at the moment where she's, like, no, 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 don't stop. My toe's not done. She takes, like, one more like an Anayil. Yeah. And then they're, like, you know what? You're right. Girl, you, like, you're good. like, stop bragging, okay? Yeah, if you keep going, you're bragging. And she's, yeah, like, yeah. but 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 there's there's a... I I think that she it had to happen that way because Egwene... Yeah can't determine for herself that she's Ayul. Yeah. She has to be given that permission by the community that she's joined. Mm-hmm. And when they give her that permission, it really is a beautiful thing. And I and I, I love I love the scene a lot. Even yeah. though it is weird and it's about spanking and obviously it like ties into our ongoing conversation about Robert Jordan's weird kinky life. I, I really do appreciate um I really do appreciate how this ended. I, I thought it was really great. Yeah. Also, I love that they're like, also, you're, like, Ruark is going to spank the shit out of you one day, too. And Egwene is like, oh, fuck. God damn it. No. <laughs> and Avienda. I cannot wait for Avienda to get her toe from Egwene. That'll be fun. Yeah. Do you think it's going to be the same? Because I don't. I think it'll be different. 
No, I think she's going to, like, save Avienda's life, and then they're going to consider it a wash. Mm, fair yeah. enough, yeah. Yeah, this chapter was really beautiful. Yeah, it was great. Um, yeah. I Who, who would have thought that such a beautiful chapter could mostly be about spanking? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the beauty of spanking. The beauty the, of spanking. Yeah. This is why this is why Robert Jordan is, is he knows what's up. Yeah. Yeah, he does. <laughs> ah, spanking. It's great. <laughs> James <laughs> Ross says, Clark, slow down or you're going to have to pee again. I had a sip. Also, it's because it's Gamer Sups, which yeah. we are also partnered with. So if you want to order your own, coupon code CLARUS. Yeah, go. Uh, the off. link is in the, the doobly-doo. Gamer Sups. It's caffeine because I don't like coffee. Yeah, and it's tasty. This is the actually, um, this is Gamer Fart. It's Guacamole really tasty. Gamer Fart 9000. Mm -hmm. um, or it, um, I, I'm pretty sure it's strawberry kiwi. but Yeah, but it's delicious. It's delightful. Um, yeah, uh, so then uh, chapter, uh, oh, no, wait. Sometimes I um, write down a new chapter in my notes. I did and, fuck up. Um, and then, but it's actually the same chapter, just a different like shift. And I, j I forgot that it was in the same chapter. So my notes sometimes have like the chapters like crossed out in them. Right. No, Rand. I, I was confused by the Rand of it all. We missed that when they left the, um, when they left the, 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 the Heart of the Stone? Yes. Rand was Rand spying Rand. on them. Yes. And Rand now knows where Saladar is. Yes. 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 That's, that, that was my note that confused me. Which, like, you know, I Egwene obviously becomes the Amaryllin. We all know this. So mm -hmm. I'm jumping a little bit ahead. But, like, Rand knowing where Saladar is, now hopefully they can work together and mm -hmm. communicate. Hopefully. Chapter 33. Uh, we already went through the Egwene stuff, but this is called Courage to Strengthen, which mm -hmm. I think is a cool title, mm -hmm. um, about Egwene spanking. Uh, but we do have a middle section of this, which is about Matt. Uh, Matt has become daddy uh, to a little boy. He's become a dad, not daddy. He's become dad to Oliver. I should have I should have worded that better. Um, so Matt is now um, Oliver's father, uh, and they're playing a game. And then Rand shows up, and Rand is like, "Yo, um, so new plan. Uh, you're not gonna go. We're not gonna go fight Samuel. Uh, I'll deal with that. Don't worry about it. Uh, you're gonna go get Elaine to Andor." Uh, have fun. Yeah. And Matt's like, God damn it, Basically, dude. yeah. That's basically what happens. It's like two days away from the plan and you're changing the plan now, my dude. Yeah. And, and I gotta go see the Aes Sedai. Yeah. I gotta go see the Aes Sedai. I mean, at least Matt is protected from being channeled on, but like him and his men showing up, like, yeah. obviously, you know, he says that they travel slow. So that they're not, they, it doesn't seem like they're trying to like ambush or surprise them. Super that smart. That they're, you know, they're like marching up, right? Yeah. Um. Obviously, that makes total sense. Um. I want Matt and Gareth Bryan to meet so bad. They're going to. Uh. That'll be really a really cool interaction. Um. But um, yeah, Rand is like it is most important that we get Egwene and put her on the throne because right now Rand is kind of stuck in Camelin. And he, he he doesn't want to leave there because he doesn't want someone else to sit in that power vacuum. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so Elaine has to be there so that he can move forward with everything else, with all of his other plans. Um, and so I totally get why Rand thinks this is most important. I think it is going to backfire. Really? Yeah. I don't. No? Okay. No. I... Uh, no, I I don't know why. why. Why why would it backfire, right? Like, what what purpose would a, a Gwen, who's now the Amarlin, have to fight Matt? It's no, you know I what think I mean. Like going to have Matt to... Matt shows up and Egwene's there. Egwene is Team Rand. Yes. Like like the 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 leadership structure of Saladar is yes, but Matt's childhood friend. I don't know why they would fight each other. But for also, reason. they show up. They shouldn't know where Saladar is. Right, that's number one. That's going to be a problem. Yeah, but B, Matt just says Rand figured it out. Like I, I, I don't know. I don't. B, we have Samael to worry about. Right, Samael's going to be like, wait, what is going on? Right, like, the, the, and Samael, I think, is going to use this to his advantage somehow because we also have the the Shido hiding in the uh, whatever that's the forest. Thousands is. of kilometers away, though. Yes, yes, but what it, does that have to do with Matt and Saladar going wrong? Because Rand's focus is on this one thing right now, right? 
I think it is going to backfire on Rand. I think that like oh oh Rand I thought, I thought is you meant that problems. I thought you meant that the Aes Sedai and Matt were gonna fight and the Band well, and no, were gonna I fight. I, I was like that doesn't make any sense to me. No, I don't think they're gonna get along great. I think that they're gonna be like, how did you find out we're here? You yeah, can't yeah, yeah, yeah. take a lane, right? They're they're gonna be very against that. Um, I, no, but I think it's gonna backfire on Rand. I just like that Rand gave Matt the incentive to want to be a part of this by being like, oh hey, your sister is in Camelin. Yeah. Bodwin. Yeah, yeah. Matt's not too happy about that. No, fair. Nor should he be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, he's he's gonna be on it. I'm I'm excited for this. I think it's gonna be cool. Also, I like that he's like, hey, pick up the dragon sworn on your way from Saladar to Camelin. Yeah. Add him to the band. Well, because <laughs> if they like join an actual like like branded like checkmark official army mm -hmm. as opposed to running around like hooligans. Um, at least Rand has some semblance of say over it, right? Yeah. Uh, the next couple chapters are insane, so let's do this. Uh, chapter 34, Journey to Saladar. Mm -hmm. Egwene is like, all right, thanks for spanking the shit out of me. I gotta go. Bye. She gives her hugs. She gives her love. And she thinks about it really hard. Uh-huh. Figures out how to walk into the dream world in the flesh and just does it. And she's like, oh, hey, it worked. Yeah. First try. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. She has had months and months to think about it, right? It's oh, yeah, no. Like, it's a new idea, and she just came up with this. But, yeah, she's like, all right, I think I got it. And she does. I also like, she's like, I can't wear my Aiel clothes, so I'm going to wear my tighter clothes, and, oh, my God, my butt's chafing. <laughs> yeah, she's like, ah, it's tight around the hips. Oopsie. Uh, and she's like, I need a way to travel in here. And so she thinks, and she's like, you know what? And the creator shows up. Yeah, God shows up to help her. No, uh, she, she creates a fake Bella. Because no. <laughs> she loves Bella. Um, we all love Bella. And she temporarily soothes her bottom for the journey. Uh, yeah, she's like, it's not cheating. I it's love a little that. Bit. It's a, a scotch cheating. And she goes to, uh, she she travels straight to Saladar. Yeah. Really quickly. Yeah. And she walks in the room and they're like, how the fuck are you here? And she's like, hi, I'm here. And they're like, all right, you're going to be the Amelin seat, kid. <gasps> Buckle up. Buckle the fuck oh up. Oh my God. Yeah, they literally just like, Bomb her with information. Yeah. Like, so this is what's going to happen. This is going to how we're going to go about it. And uh, go. Yeah. I was like, what? I thought, like, I thought she would get there and she would have like a, they, they'd be like, okay, rest up. And in the morning, we'll talk to you. We'll figure it out. They literally in the middle of the night are yeah. like, uh, okay, so this is what's going to happen. They've just been waiting this whole time. No, I, they were there meeting about something else. They didn't think she was going to No, no, no. I mean, like, everybody else. Like, when she goes and asks them to be the freaking Amarillin, everyone's just waiting for her. I'm like, what time is it? No, I think they were gathered. I think there's, like, I think there's a little bit of a break between the chapters where, like, the sit I think Egwene, like, because I think they yes. send people to go get the sitters ready when Egwene shows up. And then, because they, they need time to teach her all of the things to say and all the protocol. So yeah. I think in the time that Shariam and them were setting up the protocol, uh, uh, the sitters were being prepared for this moment. Mm -hmm. Salon had to go wake them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Sianna is right. Um, yeah, okay, Bazi fair enough. Bazimian predicted this would happen in this section. I fucking called it. This is not how I thought it was going to happen. Yeah. But I did fucking call this. Although I, I did think Egwene was going to get kidnapped one more time before she became Amberlynn, so That's all my true. predictions weren't right. That's fine. And Bella kidnapped her for like five minutes. But there was a moment in the reading where I thought I was wrong and Swan, I was like, oh, Swan's Amberlynn again. She's healed. Like when I first read her being healed, I was like, so she oh. just be, she's just the Amberlynn then, right? Like I figured yeah. that was what was going to happen. I like this version of it a lot because I like Swan and Egwene's relationship moving forward. That excites me a lot as a reader getting into their conversations with one another. That I'm really so into cool. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the 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 way that this worked out, I was like, okay, this is really cool. I, I was really into I was really into the way this worked out. I think this I, I like the I said I system of if we decide that we want you to be the Amerlin, you can't really say no without getting exiled. And I thought that that was yeah. really cool. Like that's a system of like if enough people want you to be the Amerlin and you turn it down, then that means that there's there, there's too much um, you could... You're too spicy. You could rile up um, tension in the future. You're too divisive. Right? Yeah, which is such a weird... And I, I get that. It doesn't make any sense, and their system of government is fucking awful. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, based on how they do everything else, I understand why they would think that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah, if we're basing Swan it on everything else... Sawan did try to be, but she's not strong enough anymore, which is dumb. Uh, yeah, the, it being a power level thing, and don't like that, but... No, I, I, don't, I don't like that either, especially because... Um, 
Who, who, oh, well, Egwene is like anyone who can channel any age, doesn't matter, however strong they are, we're going to get get them together, right? Because she was talking yeah. about, um, who was it who barely had any, oh, uh, um, uh, Sorelia, B- barely can channel, hardly anything at all. And she's like one of the best wise ones, right? And she's very well yeah. respected. She has this commanding presence. She gets shit done. And I love that Egwene sees that. She takes her, her time with the wise ones mm-hmm. and implements it. Um, to try and make the White Tower better. Um, hopefully, yeah. it works. Because the White Tower is a mess. Uh, so, Egwene is like, yo, this is a joke, right? And they're like, no, you're going to be the Amberlynn. Uh, so, come on, you've got to go um, uh, introduce us to Robert Jordan's next fetish, mm-hmm. which is feet. <laughs> so, yeah, Robert Jordan uh, canonically uh, buys foot pics. Um, canonically? So, uh, yeah, so they oh they go through the process... Uh, they all get tits out, and then a woman walks around and examines their boobs, which is interesting. Yeah, this was this, this is a little bit weird to me. This whole situation was so erotically well, and, charged. Yeah, and they were like, "Yeah, sometimes you you have to show more to like prove." And I was like, "What?" No, in the back in the old days, they used to go full nude for this. Yeah, I was like, "What?" Wow. Yeah, they gotta they gotta make sure that you have a vagina. I guess so. But yeah, so all the ladies get tits out for the Amerlin. Tits out. <laughs> nice wheel of time. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so the woman comes around and examines her boobs. And then while she's still topless, Egwene kneels in front of the other women and washes their feet. Uh, so there will be no smut corner this week because what the fuck do we add to this? I know. we Guys, we can't top this one. Like, God, she might as well go around and just like provide cunnilingus to all the women in the room at this point. Yeah, at this point. She only has to wash feet because uh, Romanda and Lelaine uh, sit when they could have stood. And they yes, didn't. Yes, they uh, did not want to. They, they're being stubborn about it. And so she goes around and washes the feet, and then everyone stands. And then Egwene is the Amarillin seat. Um, this is so fucking stupid. This is so dumb. Mm-hmm. This is, like, insanely... The, the, this makes the Aes Sedai and Saladar seem like f- the most wildly incompetent idiots that they could possibly be. Like, I can't, I can't even, like, believe how cocky, arrogant, and stupid this move is. You have not seen Egwene for months. Mm-hmm. Literally months. Mm-hmm. She is with the fucking Dragon Reborn, who you're not even sure if you can really trust yet. And on top of that, you know that she's been training with the wise ones who are antagonistic to you every time you meet them and who bully you and know things that you don't know and have been training her. Like, it's literally, it's this insane move where I'm like, you don't know that you can manipulate this girl. You've met her a year ago. Yeah. And you know who she's training with. You know how difficult they are. You know what they teach, right? And this Swan is... Swan and Leanne did their job. They they did their job well. Because that was what they wanted, no, right? No, but, but Swan and Leanne don't know what, what her what her motives are either. They don't know Egwene. Oh, no, it's... it's No, for sure. I'm just like, saying Swan and Leanne were like, this is what we wanted to happen, and they made it happen. Roger Lai says that they believe they can easily manipulate her. Why? They don't know her. Because she's young. That's that's literally. I know. All, yeah. I know. But that that's what I mean by it's so cocky and arrogant that it yeah. makes them seem so fucking I'm sorry. stupid. I said I cocky and arrogant. I know. What? That's know. never happened before. And I love. I I I genuinely the, my favorite part of this whole reading this week. And uh, you know, I and I won't spoil my high, but I'm spoiling my high. Is when Sawan's like, oh, they fucked up. Yeah. She looks at Egwene and goes, oh. They fucked up. Yeah, of course they fucked up. They didn't <gasps> think... If someone had come to me with this plan, I would look them in the eyes and be like, you're going to take a girl who has been training with another faction mm-hmm. for a year, yeah. is a, a powerful lady who has the abil- an ability no one else here has, and you're just going to think that you can manipulate her? Why? It, it holds. Like, that's... like that's. I'm not surprised in the slightest. Tythonus, thank you for being a seven-month narg. Thank you. Welcome back to the nerd table. Uh, all the White Tower politics are heavily inspired by the Catholic Church history. That is very cool. Yeah. That is very cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. It, Even though dumb. Catholic Church, maybe not our favorite organization. But, well, uh, honestly, neither are the Aes Sedai. Fair. Dum-dums? Like, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, they it just up. they th- this I I it, it's funny because I knew that this was gonna happen. Yeah, like I saw it coming, and I was like, oh my god, it's like watching a train crash. But you read the title of the video, so you know the train crashes in the video, yeah. and so you're just sitting there waiting for the train to crash. Yeah, and this is what is happening. Like you're literally like you guys are so you you've just given up all your power because mm-hmm. you don't know how powerful Egwene is. Egwene's really fucking powerful. She's really smart. She was hanging out with Moraine. And she was hanging out with the, with, the, with the wise women. Yeah. And also, you know that she is the only person who can travel in dreams. Like, you've given power to someone that you literally can't control because she can nope out and there's not a goddamn thing you can do about it. Yep. I don't know if you have it's to be great. a dreamwalker to travel in dreams, but I was literally reading this and I was like, you you dumb, 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 dumb. Well, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, God, I love that. I cannot wait. For Egwene to manipulate the shit out of these people and show yeah. them how dumb they are. Like, I was so excited. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, like, I just, it was literally, it was literally this moment where you're like, you are, the, one of you, one of you should have spoken up and been like, hey, does anyone, has anyone, does anyone, like, spent any time with Egwene lately? Yeah. Does anyone know her at all? No one thought to fucking ask? No. Hey, what did the wise women teach her? No, we're not worried about that. Uh, we're, we're so fucking paranoid, but we're not yeah. worried about that. Hey, maybe Egwene had really good teachers in the wise ones and well, Moraine. Well, she did. And Egwene has grown and learned so much. And she's so smart in these moments because she's like, all right, I know that I can't do this alone. Uh, Swan Alliance, great. And she's like, I need to make them think that I am a- easily manipulated, right? Mm-hmm. Like she's playing that game. And and she's got like she's like three moves ahead of everybody else, and I. She's love been it. here for a day, and she's already got everyone figured out. I love it. I love it. And yeah. and you know she's lucky because she has Nynaeve and Elaine as well. That she's like I know that I can trust these people. Remember yeah. last week when on stream I said I think within like a few chapters Egwene, Elaine, and Nynaeve are gonna run this. Mm-hmm. I predicted that. So Egwene has to give a speech, and she's like, "Yo, what's up, everybody? Mm-hmm. My name's Egwene Alvier. I'm your queen now." Uh, I know that most of you don't know me because I've been on literally in like five countries away. I've been busy. Couple things. First of all, uh, Aleda going down. I'm committed. We're going to go crush that lady. Second of all, Elaine, Nynaeve, and these other two girls, never met them, but I heard their names last night. Yeah. Uh, they're Aes Sedai now, except they haven't taken the roads, so they can lie. So I don't know what that means for the Aes Sedai system. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, we're going to go with that. Uh, also, that's it. Uh, there's more I'm supposed to say, but I don't want to talk for a very long time. Let's all part. Uh, nobody has to do chores today yeah. uh, unless it's necessary to have no fun. Chores. Uh, let's fucking party. I'm the Amelin C. Also, Shariam's my keeper. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Smaller cheers. Um, uh, Cyanet yeah. says, imagine giving a speech written by 18 people. This I've is done a very it. short speech to be written by 18 people. But. I think it was supposed to be pretty long, but um. yeah. Yeah, I love. She's like, ah, you know, this isn't exactly in it. I'm gonna change this word because it's a little bit better. Like I was like, oh, they're already fucked. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. they are already so. The, the Aes Sedai of the Little Tower are so fucked. Yes. Egwene is going to run this shit. Okay, now the only thing is, um, the only thing is, Egwene needs to learn how to have conversations with Rand if this is gonna work. Cause this might this might get ugly. I don't know. I think I think that the, like I think that what we saw the conversation with them in his room. I, I feel like they they had a pretty decent communicative conversation. Yes, yes. But because Egwene, um, because Egwene humbled herself a little bit, I don't uh, because she's the Amarillo seat now. I think she's gonna be like worried about how that comes across, yeah, that's and fair. she's gonna think that Rand needs to show just as much respect like I, I just I think it, it it has the potential to get real ugly mm-hmm. um yeah so uh the basically the, the the rest of the reading this week was just um Egwene hanging out with people after becoming the Amelin C uh and so uh she gets to talk with the Shariam and the sitters mm-hmm. uh they're upset that Shariam is the keeper because they wanted other people to do the keepers but whatever yeah uh, and uh she's like I need to talk to Nynaeve Elaine uh and Swan and mm-hmm. Swan is going to teach her etiquette, but really they're going to work together uh, to yeah. run this shit. Uh, and I love that it's like it gives Swan purpose. And uh, Nynaeve and Elaine show up, and they're like, "Yo, are we actually Aes Sedai?" And Egwene's yeah. like, "Yeah, no, I'm not. I, I'm not fucking around." Yeah. And they're like, "I meant it when chill, I said chill, chill. it." Cool, 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 cool. Right, right, right. Dope. 
Uh, we need to go to Ebu Dar. Mm -hmm. And Egwene's like, cool, cool, cool. I'll make that happen. Give me a bit. We need to like, we need to be smart about it. Yeah. But I, I'll make that happen. And they're like, hey, also, yeah, we captured one of the Forsaken and we're keeping her <laughs> as a prisoner. I also love that they accidentally <laughs> mention Brigitte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Egwene has no idea what happened to Brigitte. Yeah. She's like, oh, the person they were talking to in Tyrannic? Mm -hmm. Weird. Okay, I don't know why she's That's, important right now. But. They're going to have to reveal that as well to her. Oh, they? yeah, yeah. They're, they're going to have to, especially if they leave, right? Yeah. Um, um, and uh, uh, Egwene is like, I will take that. Mm -hmm. I will wear it. Um, and I will wear it at all times. She's like, oh, God, I hate this. Yeah. Uh, she's like, how do they do it? <laughs> what do you think about, um, what do you think about Egwene, who hates the Adam so much, feeling the need to carry the weight of that? Well, I think it makes so much sense. It's very martyry, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it is It is interesting how much Egwene feels the need. To, she's like, I because I don't think it's about control. I don't think Egwene is like, I'm better at holding this than the two of you. No. I, I do legitimately think it's Egwene saying, this is, it is my responsibility to maintain the safety of the community. Yes. Now that I'm the Amerlin, and so this is a burden I must bear for you all, mm -hmm. which I think is a really interesting way to look at it. Like, I think that um, Egwene's, Gwen's ne feeling the necessity of that mm -hmm. is so fascinating to me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. She, like, I think that, like, you know, she obviously all, often has very strong reactions when seeing, like, the Adam and the... I, I think that I think that this is going to be um, potentially problematic for her mm -hmm. because it, 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 it might just be, like, a little too close to home, in a sense. Um, and I'm worried that that's how Mogadian is going to get her in to escape somehow. Cause, yeah, yeah. Because Mogadian was a little bit too cocky in that one scene, and I think she's cooking stuff up. Um, especially because we now know that Erengar is nearby. Uh, that's... Do you think Erengar knows that Mogadian's there? Uh... Wait, I hadn't even thought about that! Do you think that Erengar knows who Mogadian is? Well, Mogadian right now is, like, hidden, right? Yeah, but... She's oh, like disguised. But Erengar actually can't sense female. Ch oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. depends on if they recognize what an Adam is. Oh, shit. I had not. Because she's he has to wear the collar at all times, right? I hadn't so thought about Erengar at all in relation to McGideon. That's yeah. fascinating. I, it, it, to me, it hinges on whether or not Erengar knows what that device is because right now Mogideon is like hidden. Oh and Mogideon would not recognize Erengar, right? Because it's a new body. So when Mogideon escapes, because she will, right? Mm -hmm. Her desire for revenge is going to be legendary. Yep. Um, Nim says, I think this is why they made Egwene Tavirin in the show to justify this happening to her so young. I actually do. I, I do like that, actually, Nim. Uh -huh. I think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good point. And yeah, it, look, as much as I complained about them making her Tavirin, taking away some of her agency and leaving um, the two rivers. Yeah. I think that making her to Viren because of this moment makes a lot more sense. And now that I've read further ahead and I can see where they're going with Nynaeve, or with uh, Egwene, sorry. Egwene, yeah. I actually think making her to Viren uh, does make sense. I, I don't see how it doesn't now because she clearly is, she clearly is bending the pattern around herself in a weird way, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And just being in pro close proximity to all of them. But This um, is going to be fun. This will probably be like season four. And I'm yeah. really excited for Egwene being raised. Yeah, I love that. Um, uh, I love that um, the uh, the the conversation about hey, I think I figured out how to travel, mm -hmm. and Megidian's like, not if you want to fuck shit up royally. And she's like, it's... no, she 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 brings up how Rand says that he channels. Yeah, and yeah, she's yeah. like, yeah, no, don't do that. Yeah, because uh, because it's a it's one more kind of demonstration of how different the male and female like source is. Um, well, and I think that... It was really interesting. I think that showing... So, Egwene starts threatening Mogidian immediately with death, with murder. And uh, it shows how much the Aiel have changed Egwene, right? She doesn't fuck around. And then th my favorite line in this sequence is mm -hmm. she she does channel. And Mogidian's like, who taught you how to do that? And Egwene, nobody taught her how to do that. Mm -hmm. But rather than saying that, she turns to Mogidian and goes, don't presume that I don't already know the answer to my questions. Lie to me and you will die. Yeah. Is... 
fucking cold. That is some Sora Leah level cold bullshit there. And I ate it up. I was it's like, right. give yeah. me another dose of Gwen, goddamn. Yeah. No, oh! That was fantastic. Yeah, it's cool. Uh-huh. This, sec- this section was fucking cool. Yeah. I thought her being raised Amberlynn, look, I think it's dumb. I think it makes I look stupid. But like... The, but I love it for story purposes. For, for our main characters, awesome. <laughs> I love it. I really like the reading this week, guys. Yeah. I was very happy. This section was yeah. so freaking good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, a couple other things before uh, we're done with all of the reading. Um, uh, Ramonda, Lelaine, and uh, the, so Ramonda and Lelaine both we get their point of view. We views, get a little short POV, which is fun. Where they both reveal that they only stood for um, Egwene to stop the other person from getting raised to Emerlyn seat. Yeah. So the, there's some fun politicking going on there, and they're both wondering where Delana is. Yep. So Delana uh, is with Arangar. Uh, and is scared to be playing both sides. Yeah, she's like, mm-hmm. this is not going to work. And Aaron goes like, ah, I don't care. You're going to do exactly what I tell you to. Yeah. <laughs> Wheel of Time, thank you for the super chat. A thank lot of the you. show decisions will make more and more sense the deeper you get into the books. Taishar already got my bed bond bail fire ready. Can't wait. <laughs> Incredible. Can't wait. Um, so Nine, we cut over to, uh, oh, no, we cut over to Swan first. Uh-huh. Swan is influencing Lelaine, being like, oh, man. <sighs> This Egwene, she's got such a temper, and like she just won't march on the White Tower. Oh, I know. And so then then even Ramondo talking, and she's like, Yeah, that Egwene won't march on the White Tower. And Lelaine, Lelaine says, Don't march on the White Tower. It's crazy. I know. Lelaine says this. Wild, right? And then we cut to Elaine, who's with Shariam, and Mm -hmm. is like, Ramonda and Elaine, man. They're really, like, they're really hamming on, on, on Egwene hard, and I'm really worried that, like, Egwene, she can't handle it. You know, she's just been, she just got here. It's going to be so, so scary for her. And Shariam is like, I accept my responsibility. And so we cut over to Egwene, and she's in her bathtub. Her maid is nattering on about gossip, mm-hmm. and she's just sitting there going, the wise ones would be proud of me. Uh-huh. And I was like... God yeah. damn, this is good. Yes, they are. God, this is some good shit They're right here, Robert so Jordan. Proud Just of you. fucking in my veins. God damn. Oh my god, this was great. This chapter, this whole chapter, I with loved how it. the manipulation of Megidian, the manipulation of all the dumb, dumb Aes Sedai ladies. Yeah. Fucking loved it. One of my favorite sections in the books overall. Like, oh, this was great. Yeah. So good. This made Egwene, this this made Egwene, I, I was really kind of getting like tired of Egwene and I didn't really like her for what she did to Nynaeve in the last book. Yeah. This brought it around for me where I'm like, oh, now I'm in. Now I'm so in on this story. Yeah. This sets up some interesting stuff. It creates political drama that I'm like interested to read. Yeah. This was cool. This was so cool. Mm-hmm. And like, I really, really like this week's reading. Yeah, me too. Also, Rand's sending Matt the way that he did. Like, th- uh, the only thing that would have been better is a fucking Perrin chapter, maybe, Robert Jordan? Where the fuck is Perrin? I don't know who that is. I've been aggressive today. I've been high energy. <laughs> um, Nerdy's uh, caffeinated. But I just liked it. This was good shit. You know what I mean? Like, this was really good shit. And it was a yeah. lot of good shit. And, like, I'm just... And a lot of, like, like shifting power dynamics and, like, changing... Like, a lot of, like, payoff, right? Yeah. Because Egwene has been with the Wise Ones for so long. And she finally has this moment of them. So really is like, so I told you, she's basically born in Aiel. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. I loved yeah. it. This, 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 this kind of reminded me of why I love... The, what, what got me into the loving the the book club in the first place, right? Like this yeah. was like one of those weeks where you're like every chapter was a banger. Yeah, I I finished my reading days early because mm-hmm. I was just like this is so freaking good. I loved it. Perrin, you mean Pater? He got hung, remember? Not. Oh my god. Perrin died from snoo snoo. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. How do you not know what snoo snoo is? Why? How are you culturally illiterate? Like, I'm literally illiterate. illiterate, illiterate. Do you want to take two? Take three. I don't know that I want to try and say. All right. Literally illiterate. Okay, there, there we go. go. If I go mm-hmm. really slow, my brain can do it. <laughs> um, Perrin got COVID in the book and had to quarantine. Oh, my God. Uh, Snoo Snoo is, there's an episode of Futurama where um, the... Uh, they, they land on a planet where there are these giant Amazonian women who keep saying death by snoo snoo. Uh, and then they find out that snoo snoo is sex. And the men are like, okay, what a way to death go. Death by sex. Yeah. Glory, glory, what a hell of a way. <laughs> oh, um, wow. 
Uh, Logic's all said to buy you the Culture DLC. Yes, yes, yes. Culture, oh. The only DLC Clarus plays is the DLC for Civilization V. I have all the DLCs for Civilization V. Yes, she does. Even though I've never played Venice. Just, I didn't. Uh, You've never played Venice? Yeah. What's Venice? Ven Venice, the... The faction? The Civ, the Civ oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, book six is not generally considered part of it at all. The, if, if people think that this is the slog, I'm ready for the slog. This oh, book has this been is fantastic. Great. This is one of my favorite books right yeah. now. Yeah, this is, this is I, I love this. Lord of Kiss, and here's why it's good, is because all of the plot machinations as they move forward are headed towards something. And it, like the, the momentum of this book, like Fires of Heaven, there was uh -huh. no momentum to so much of Nynaeve and Elaine's storyline because it was literally like, where where is Saladar? Don't know. Okay, so we're just gonna have them hanging out essentially, yeah, yeah, yeah and being yeah. pissy with each other, yeah. and they're just doing things to like waste time. Mm -hmm. Whereas this book, everything about this book is about this like perpetual motion forward as we head towards Ilian, as we head towards whatever Dumai's Wells is, as we head yeah. towards the confrontation of the White Tower, yeah. and like this, like the pace of this book has been just driving, yeah, and it's it's so fucking cool, and yeah, yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah. I, I'm loving this book a lot. I, I honestly, because I think that because we're doing book club and because we're like pushing along, um, I, uh, I, I don't think that we're going to experience the slog the way that a lot of other people have. Mm -hmm. Um, I like everyone's like, oh no, this is the slog. This is the slog. This, like you know, and not even everyone can agree on it. And some people, some of their favorite books are in those places. So yeah. I think that whatever you guys think is the slog is not going to register the same way for us. And I'm, yeah. I'm kind, I'm happy about that. You know, we're lucky we get to ask section every week and we get to talk about it and analyze it and mm -hmm. um. I'm looking forward to that. I, I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing what what people consider that to be because I know people had to wait for books, right? So they didn't maybe get as much information as they wanted to. Um, also, Michael L., yes, I know what Dumais Wells is because I know the chapter is called Dumais Wells. And because we've been told to do a, we're gonna re, we're gonna do a reaction gonna to react. listening to the audiobook of that chapter. Yeah, we're gonna get the audiobook for that. Um, uh, Metheny, if you're still there, I know you sent me a bunch of Audible stuff. Um, I'm gonna try and message you. I don't, I think because I'm in Canada, it didn't work. I mm. couldn't use the code, so I'm so sorry, but thank you. That was very, very kind. Um, there's also, uh, going back to Civ for one quick quick moment, going back to Civ, um, uh, there is a Wheel of Time mod for Civilization oh, there is. 6. Oh, okay. We talked about maybe doing a stream or several, because it will probably take many hours of playing the Wheel of Time mod. Sex Monkey is going through the mod to make sure there's no spoilers. Monkey, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. You are the absolute best. Um, so yeah, that that might happen. That I, that yeah. those will be fun streams. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna see if we can try and make that work because I think that'll be really fun. Um, um, also, I will say, Dumai's Wells is one of the few things about Wheel of Time I knew before I started watching the show. Like, Do Eyes Wells is one of like the few. I have no idea what happens there. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's a location. Yeah. But. I have no idea what happens in Dumai's Wells, but it was one of those things that, like, in talking about fantasy, I had heard of before. Like, Wheel of Time has, like, Dumai's Wells. Like, I, I, for some reason, that was, like, in, like, the cultural ethos of, you should read Wheel of Time. Yeah. And so I'm excited yeah. that it's happening in this book because it's something that I've heard. Of. It's just one of those things that, like, I just knew existed because I'm a nerd kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I'm very, I'm excited for it, but I have no idea what happens there. Yeah. I'm assuming that, like, it's going to be cool. Yeah. Because yeah. everyone keeps, literally, like, people have been tweeting me, it people have been DMing famous. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, is, it is a famous moment in, like, fantasy, like, like fiction history, right? The question um, is, do we want to put it out, do we want to put out a reaction before book club, or should that go live after book club? Should we do book club and then people can see our reaction, or should we put out the reaction and then do book club? That's a good question. Would you guys rather see our reaction to that chapter before or after book club? Yeah. Um, let us know, because I, I don't I don't know. Dumai's Wells is located near the taint. Guys, no more about Dumai's Wells. Our mods already have a hard enough job. Book club first and then reaction. <laughs> after book club. Oh, seen some before, seen some after. Uh a lot of people uh, we'll, well do a we'll do a poll in the Discord. So if you're not a member of the Discord, please come join our Discord. Yeah. Community. We have an incredible community over there. Yes. And there's a Wheel of Time spoiler channel where you can talk about all the stuff that gets deleted out of our chat. Yes, um, yes. Uh, mods, if you wouldn't mind grabbing a Discord link uh, for Dumai's us. Dumai's Falls is located in Studio City, California. Um, we will, yeah, we'll do a, 
we will do a poll in the Discord, and I mm-hmm. think that'll be the best way to be able to, to, to do that. So we'll figure that out. Um, all right, so... <sighs> I'm so excited for this retweeting. <laughs> <laughs> so having said that, it's time for High and Low, where we talk about our highs and lows, because this is what my family did at the dinner table when we were kids. We would uh, commiserate over our lows, celebrate our highs, and it would bring us closer together as a family, uh, much like Gwen has been brought close no, to the IEL. No, we missed something that we have to talk about. The floor what? is yours. Sulin. Oh, fuck! I know! Right. I literally oh, goddamn, Sulin! Sitting here waiting. To, to, oh my god, I can't believe we forgot. Sulin! You almost called it. You were like half right. Yeah, I did. I did kind of call it. Yeah, yeah. She did not become Gai Shan because she can't. But she literally (coughs) became a Camelon Palace servant. Yeah, that hurt. It hurt my soul. It hurt deep down in my butthole. I felt that one like in my taint. Yeah, that was that that moment. Oh, my God. I was like, ah, like... And, and it made sense. When when you yep. said it and you called her being like Gishan, I was like, it's going to be definitely something along those lines. And I love that Rand is like, I don't fucking get it. Yeah. I'll talk to her. We'll figure this shit out, shit out. But like... And they're like, no, you can't talk to her and figure this shit out. She has to meet her toe. Yes. It's yeah. her toe and it's her like... It's her idea of whatever is happening. She like, shamed those guys Shan yeah. by doing what she did and she has to make it up to them. Yeah. 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 Um, how which is, which is like... There's a part of me that's like, look, I get it, but also like, if Sulin is like as good as she is, we need her to like get her spears back quick. That's what I mean. A lot so, like, of fighting coming how up. How long do you think she's gonna be there? If anything happens to Rand while she's a maid, the she will, she will never forgive herself. Yeah, and I think he's gonna get captured. I love Sulin. I did not expect Sulin to become like one of my favorite me characters, either. but I really do love her. No, I think that like I think Rand is going to be captured. <coughs> and she's gonna be like, I this I wasn't there. Yeah. And it's gonna be hard. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, that's Sulin. And and Rand's like, I think, I mean, Rand did say that he thinks he's figured something out. So I'm excited for what that is. Me too. And I hope it's not just another spanking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is either. There's a lot of things in here that are mentioned that I'm like, God damn it. I don't mm-hmm. actually know what, like, uh, like I have no predictions for it. Yeah. I'm excited to read this one and find find it out. Um. So, but, Clarus. <clears throat> yes. I already explained what high and low is. What's your high and low? Uh, so, my high... Um, my, there's so many to choose from, Yeah. Uh, to be honest. Um, I think it was, um, oh my God, there's, there's so many, there's, there's so many, uh, to pick just one is, I think I'm going to have to go with, um, <coughs> the moment where Suan is like, I can't be Amerlin. I am going to shape the next Amerlin. I like, I, I, mm, Wayne yeah, and yeah. I are going to work together on this and um the fact that you know like she's made up kind of with Nynaeve and Elaine and they're like friends yeah and if she's working like Swan is in the in circle and I'm really excited to 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 have Swan's like thinking laid out on the table for us and for Egwene and to see how Egwene combats it because they're not gonna agree on everything and so I'm, I'm really looking forward to how they are going to find a balance between them I have the hiccups. Um, so yeah, we kind of skipped over that, but I, I do love that Swan is a character that we keep meeting in relation to her desires yeah. and her goals. And so we, we we keep running into Swan's goals and we keep finding out what they are. And I, I think that is fascinating storytelling and I really love it. I love when you can really distill your <laughs> character down to what they want in life. Uh-huh. Uh, and that's really how we've distilled Swan. That's She is such a driven character and we know that she is just one of those people who like... <laughs> sees something and she tunnel visions it so hard mm-hmm. right yeah. um and um. so i think uh i think her her tunnel vision of her goals because before before she was stilled it was preparing the dragon report for tarman gaiden right yeah now it's this and then uh, and then it was um manipulating the little tower mm-hmm. and now it is being an Aes Sedai who can manipulates the little tower and and yeah. teaching a Le- a Gwen to be the best amulet seat possible because you know uh, Assuming she doesn't die, Egwene will probably be the Amaranth seat for the rest of Swan's life. Boo. What? I'm trying to scare you. <laughs> Damn it. Uh... <laughs> if you're trying to scare someone, you have to go boo. No. You have to go like, big. The... You can't just go boo. Well, <laughs> I thought it would be. Sh- I thought you were trying to be fucking boo from fucking Monsters no, Inc. No, I was trying to like be like silly about it and that it would hopefully start you laughing because it was so dumb. That then the hiccups would go away. No. There was no way I was gonna like scare you, right? So, anyways, it didn't work. Um, my low. It's time for my low. Uh, the fucking Aes Sedai are dumb, 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 dumbs. 
they're so dumb. They're stupid. And they should have thought of this. And mm. it's not really a low, because I kind of like, I, I like Robert Jordan's writing of them. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Like, I don't think it's bad writing. But, like, you know, you want your you want your good guys to be competent. And the Aes Sedai aren't. No. Ramond and Lelaine are just... Yeah. Yeah. They're carrot they're they're giving him the carrot in, in, in the most obvious way possible and they have no fucking clue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um my low of the section uh was um Just was... another false dragon wrote, guys, your channel is getting demonetized. What does that oh, mean? Oh, he's trying to scare me. Oh <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? Thankfully, Ow. thankfully, we have zero strikes, so we're actually like far away from being. We actually like guys. should be. But I'm gonna check really quick just to make be all right. sure. Um. My, oh, we passed twelve thousand three hundred subscribers. Let's freaking go! Um, it's hard for me to pick a low Ooh. for this section. Yeah. Um. Uh. My low is freaking um. Uh. Rand and Avienda don't know how to talk to one another, and now Avienda is with Matt. So uh, they. Uh, I'm, I'm. My low is that we're. Is that that moment of reconciliation? I think is much farther away than I want it to be. So that's fair. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah for that's sure. that's kind of that's my low. It's, that was hard this week. There's not really a lot of lows. Yeah, no, it was really great reading this week. Mm -hmm. um, I've already soaked my highs, but I'll repeat it. It's Swan going. Oh, they fucked up. Yeah. Looking mm -hmm. at Egwene and going. They fucked up. <laughs> oh hey, you've changed. <laughs> You've changed. They made, they made a mistake, but I can work with this. I, I really like that. <laughs> There's something about the woods. There's something about the waste. <laughs> yeah. Um, There's something about the waste. Yeah. I, um, I just, I I, uh, I really loved it. I, I loved it so much. And um, I, Sawan, man, what a character. Yeah. And she broke my heart this week, too. The, yeah. My other high is obviously the emotion of that moment just really hit me. And I, I think Suan yeah. is a lot of our high this yeah, week. Yeah, she's so good. For she's sure. such a good character. And mm -hmm. the, the casting for her in the show is so perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, that actress is going to crush all Ooh. of these scenes. And I'm so excited for it. I, I really do. <laughs> the poor podcast listeners like, the fuck is going on? I have the hiccups. I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, the casting, spot on. I, I cannot wait. Um, but we're nearing the end of the show, so it's a good time to say for the last time that this podcast <laughs> is sponsored by... <laughs> Audible, where you know if you if you like listening and uh, you don't like uh, looking at things, then Audible. So if you're a is... woman, what? Women are good at listening, and they're not their their sexual drive is not as visually driven as men. Is that fact? Yeah, that's why that's why um like not not a hundred percent across the board, but women are more likely to get turned on by like smut than they are by like visual porn because women are more imaginative. Uh. Uh, whereas men are more men are more like visually stimulated. Interesting. Uh, and so that's and so men are more likely to watch porn. Anyways, Audible. Men are more likely to watch porn. But women are more likely to listen to smut. Yeah. <laughs> on so Audible. Get your smut on Audible uh, with a nerdy nightly trial. <laughs> how how have you? I'm the dyslexic one. AudibleTrial.com slash Nerdy Nightly is where you go to get your free month of Audible and a free book. You get a free. whole free. ass free Audible yeah. book uh, oh, on us. Uh, so go to AudibleTrial.com slash Nerdy Nightly. We cannot get through an episode of this podcast without something happening. Oh, my God. Hit the like button on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Yes, like the bat and smash button. Uh, and if you don't, if you're not a Smut Corner person, if you're not going to stick around for Smut Corner, I do ask uh, that you um, click on today's Sandman video and go give it a like. Yes. Um, it's not performing as well as the other videos because it, it's not everybody's favorite episode. But Which is okay. That's totally fine. It's okay. We're going to drop a link. But I'm going to drop the link. If you could go give this video a, a like, mute it and give it a watch. You know what I mean? I would really appreciate that. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh my god, these hiccups are the death of me. And if you would like to continue the Wheel of Time discussion, you can join our Discord. Yes. Um, there is a spoiler and non-spoiler uh, chat section. Remember to keep it civil and the mods are gods. Thank you, mods. We appreciate all that you do. The mods word is law. They speak for us. And because uh, we obviously cannot go into the uh, spoiler <laughs> channel. So whatever they say goes. Um, yeah. Guys, mods, we appreciate you so much. Um, definitely come check out the Discord. It's it's a fun time. Yeah. Uh, next week's reading, chapters uh, 38 to 48. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, you can also find that pinned in the Discord uh, channel as well. Yeah. Um, so if you're ever wondering, uh, Discord or Twitter, or uh, we now have an Instagram for uh, Nerdy Widow Book Club as well. 
Um, and um, yeah, do something nerdy tonight for those of you who are not sticking around for Smut Corner. Um, <gasps> All right, it's time for the, the hiccupy Smut Corner. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, it's hard to add Smut, like you said, because obviously- uh, It's not that hard. Robert Jordan added in the, the feet, uh, feet Smut for us. Uh, boobies and feet, you know. I can think combo. of a few good places though. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, after they spank the shit out of Egwene in mm -hmm. order to like soothe her bottom, I think that you know they, the, the, you know, things in that tank get a little spicy with the. To aisle. soothe her bottom, how would that help? You take a little lotion, you rub it in. Butt massages. Yeah, and All then right. the butt massage leads to a little cunnilingus, you know, a little, a little, uh, a little kiss on the neck, Egwene's kiss like, on the boob. No, guys, I, uh, I gotta go. Uh, and they're like, mm -hmm. like one more orgasm. <laughs> Before, you know. One more orgasm. There's this, a, this woman has no toe to me. This woman has no toe to me, but I will dip my toes in her. <gasps> um, that is that is much okay. Uh, what else? Um, there was there were some other good points. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I'm I'm literally hiccuping like crazy. I'm sorry. It is not as it is funny, and it it shouldn't be. Um, um, oh, oh, um, obviously, uh, Gowan and Egwene. Oh, Gowan and Egwene. They, like, so much knee sitting. Yes. And, you know, she's, like, grinding on that knee a little bit. You know yes. what I mean? She's giving a little, like, doing the worm. Doing the worm on that yes. knee. Yes, <laughs> that, that knee is doing the Lewis worm's work. Theron is deep inside Rand. That is funny. That is very funny. Uh, yes, he is. Is that masturbation? Is that masturbation? That's a good question. That's a good, that is a good question. If it's one body that you share, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like my brother brings yourself. up, I, we didn't bring it up. Yeah, uh, everyone keeps call. Uh, everyone, everyone keeps calling uh, Gwen mother now, and she calls everyone daughter, which is just like, what are you doing, step mom? No, no, we're not going there. Absolutely not. That step trooper clip is so funny. The I'm so glad I have it. Have you been like, what are you doing, step trooper? I don't even know why I said that. Don't know either. Oh god. Rand and Lewis and Rand doing a Homelander. Very funny. Very just funny. Jerking off on top of the on top of Camelin. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that Rand is gonna conquer the White Tower and gonna stand on top of it and just ejaculate? Oh, like the end of season two. Uh, well, that's the image we're leaving you with. Rand Althor Jack <laughs> off on top of the White Tower. Oh god. I mean, look, he, that man is stressed. He needs some kind of release, you know what I mean? Do something if he's got to rub one out, I, I I don't blame him. Bye. Bye. <laughs>